Got it. I'm on. All right, we're here. It is time for the Creator Cup. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of matches planned for today. There's going to be four matches today um, against eight separate teams, and I'm hoping everything is going to run smoothly and there are no issues. So I'm going to wait a second for people to get here. The first match will be starting here in a moment at around 12:10 uh, EST, and we will be all set and ready to go. So I guess we should go look at the team. So the first team, we are going to have our first team called Goaded. Goaded has a lot of big players on it. It's going to have OA Fury, one of the former number two players in the world. It also has Noseboy. He was number 42 in the world, but he is as well still an amazing base builder, and he's going to be great to have on the team. And lastly, we have Alvero845 as their creator. He is currently at 4,900 trophies, so definitely not necessarily a pro, but with these teammates he has, I mean, OA Fury has two former number two world finishes and a number three world finish, and Noseboy is building them some amazing bases, so I'm pretty sure they're going to have a good chance, but they are up against one of the best teams in the tournament here. That is going to be Midnight Bash, and Midnight Bash has C6 Shrimp, who is widely regarded as the best builder base player in the world. He has three number one finishes, and that was just the only months he pushed. He has never pushed a month without getting number one in the world, and he is seen as one of the best players in the world. And on his team, he also has Jopo, yet another really solid player. He has a couple top 10 finishes, and his best top 10 finish uh, was the number six finish he had a few months ago. And their creator on their team is going to be Clash Bashing, who has pushed all the way up to 5,065 trophies in preparation for the tournament. So it's definitely, it's definitely going to be an interesting match. I mean, if we're going to look at the teams we got here with the three-time number one player versus the two-time number two player, it is definitely going to be close. So, I mean... I'm definitely excited to see how it's going to go. I'm a, I'm a little little interested. Fury and C6 Shrimp have a lot of drama, I'll be honest. Um, it, every time Fury is pushed a season, C6 Shrimp will come up and take the number one finish because, you know, he's widely regarded again as one of the best Builder Base 2.0 players in the world. And it's going to be absolutely amazing to see them play. But Fury, it's going to be a little bit of a rivalry. Who's going to do it better? It's definitely having some of the feud behind it. Uh, Fury, even C6 Shrimp before the tournament started, he messaged me saying like he wanted to call him out in the trailer. He wanted to have him in the trailer. So I'm very, I'm very interested to to see if it's going to hold up to it or if the nerves are going to get to them now. I believe Fury is on a flight right now, so it's he's going to be using airplane Wi-Fi. Hopefully that doesn't go terribly for him. And we are going to be getting into matches very soon here. So for everyone who is just joining, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to go look again at the teams. Back to Goated. I mean, their player, a lot of what this is going to come down to is how much the creator trained. So the Alvero 845, I'll be honest, he did not train as much as Clash Bashing did. And because the top players are typically 6-star, six 6-star six after 6-star, whatever the creator gets is probably going to be the tiebreaker here. So I'm very, very interested to see who's going to win the entire tournament because it really will come down to which creator practiced the most. I mean, uh, between the two teams, obviously, Midnight Bash has a huge advantage, of course. Midnight Bash being one of the best clans in the world for Builder Base, been number one every single season in the Builder Base ever since Builder Base 2.0 came out, and that is because they have some of the best players such as Shrimp and Jopo. So it is going to be a little bit tense. Um, I They are all friends, kind of. I mean, as I mentioned, Fury and C6 Shrimp have a little bit of drama, but I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that this can kind of resolve that there. They've never really had a 1v1 situation, so going to be very interesting to see how this one plays out. And again, I'm, I'm really hoping to see some interesting uh, interactions between the creators. Uh, a lot of people on the team honestly don't have high hopes for how the creators are going to do. Um, I'll be honest, Builder Base is a lot more difficult than I think a lot of people give it credit for. So it's going to be interesting to see like if they're going to be able to even get past the first stage. I know that doesn't sound very hopeful, but that is a lot of the players' concerns here. What they're, what they're really wor worried about in uh, all the pro players is that will the creator at least get to the second stage and get like four or five stars, or are they going to fail on the first stage and get two or one even? I mean... 
is definitely going to be quite difficult. I, I as well was part in training a couple of the creators here. I mean, me and Beaker's Lab and this guy, Jacob's Clash, we both, uh, I was involved in their training and it definitely is a huge learning curve. So for everyone who didn't train for this, it is going to be a very difficult thing for them to try and pull off here, but really, really hoping it doesn't go poorly. So we now have roughly about how long? I think three minutes until the very first match starts. We will be having a maintenance break coming soon, but luckily that is not going to be affecting us. So why don't we go ahead one last time, get an idea of who is going to be uh, attacking today. Just for everyone who may have just shown up, we have go to players, of course, with the former number two player in the world, OE Fury. He has two number two finishes and a number three finish. And then Noseboy, he, Noseboy is the lowest ranked player in the entire tournament, having a number 42 world finish which of, of course it is uh, compared to, for instance, the number twos or the number ones a little bit low, but he is still yet a really good attacker. He has beaten me in a few 1v1s, which definitely hurt my ego a little bit, but it was still pretty cool to see him. He does a lot of Noah's Ark and Alvero 845, nearly at 5,000 trophies. But then again, if you look at this other team, they clearly have the advantage here with C6 Shrimp having three number one finishes, of course, compared to Fury's two number two finishes. They also have Clash Bashing, who has 5,065 trophies compared to Alvaro's 4,900, and Jopo with a number six finish compared to, uh, what's his name, Noseboy's number 42 finish. So it is going to be quite a difficult matchup. I'm very excited to see how it's going to play out, and we'll get to that very, very soon here. So, I mean, you guys can make your bets in the chat here. Which team do you think is going to win? Do you think Go to Players is going to take the victory here, even though they clearly have the disadvantage? Or do you think the team Midnight Bash is going to take the win here? I mean, go ahead and cast your vote here. It's definitely, uh, I would say my vote is probably on Midnight Bash. I, I get it's kind of the easy option here, but... I mean, the three-time number one player in the world, also in addition to having a number six player in the world, and Clash Bashing, who as well, he did push a little bit in the first season of Builder Base 2.0, so it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not that skill that he got there is still going to stay there. I know that he did train a little bit. He was training earlier today, so he is definitely trying to be prepared for this tournament, and any minute now, we're going to be going into the very first attack of the stream. Um, it's going to be a little interesting to see how this is going to go, but let's go see. It's roughly 10, 15 seconds away. I try to keep everyone onto a tight schedule and gave them exact times to start, and here is nearly going into the first match. They've posted the attack, and now it's time to see how will OE Fury do in the very first attack. He is going to be starting us off and up against C6 Shrimp, and we're going to be going into it now. So... We have the very first attack here of the tournament. That is going to be Fury up against C6 Shrimp. And this one, it's definitely a, a difficult base. This base, I've failed on it multiple times. And it looks like he's using one of his favorite armies. He calls it LT and Old Strategy. Three baby dragons. Never mind, sorry. Four baby dragons. And now, I don't really know how this is going to play out. I'll be honest. Um, four baby dragons up against this base is really not what I would have expected here. Um, and I have seen it. Oh, one second. We're kind of running. Okay, hopefully this isn't too bad. Okay, so he's starting in both the cannon carts from both sides of the base here, and he is barely out of range of the lava launcher over there. Hopefully that's not going to come back and bite him. We're going to have to see. It looks like this match is going through a little bit of technical difficulties that won't continue. I'm just going to change something real soon. But he's going to be starting in the battle copter from the laboratory side. And what he's going to try and do there is be able to take down the archer tower, the firecrackers, and... I don't know about this entrance, I'll be honest. I mean, putting in the Battlecopter right there is going to be a very interesting decision. I mean, look, he's going to get absolutely destroyed by both the Archer Towers and the Firecracker. He finds a Tesla, which means there's probably going to be a Tesla on the other side here. And it looks like C6 Shrimp is baiting him here. I mean, they have had many matches up against each other in the top of the leaderboards. And, yep, that is a dead Battlecopter. C6 Shrimp, look, another Tesla. Okay, this is this is really bad for Fury. This is... <laughs> This could be a two-star, honestly. I mean, this is not looking good whatsoever. If he gets down that Lava Launcher, it looks like the Baby Dragon ability does barely get it down. But look, the Tesla pops up. He's going towards it. Luckily, no small bombs. And this one is looking really bad to start off the match here. Fury needs to make sure he can at least get to the second stage. Look at that one HP cannon card. That is, that is not what you want to see. There's another giant bomb at the top. If that baby dragon ability does not get onto the giant cannon, this match is over. It barely looks like it's going to... Yes, okay, he gets onto the giant cannon, so now it's up to time. And if he finds any giant bombs, any bombs whatsoever, this is going to be an, a complete fail to start off the match here. This is not what you want to see. 
in the very first attack here of the tournament. Luckily, the tournament is double elimination. He can outrange that giant cannon, but it is going to be quite difficult to do. We're just going to hope that it doesn't go terribly wrong. And we see he's going towards the air expo. If he finds any giant bombs, any small bombs with that left cart, this is going to be a done attack. It looks like he's going to be able to barely maybe get it. He has the cannon cart moving and he finds a small bomb. Here comes the other cannon cart from the other side. Oh, he paused it. I, I understand why, but now he loses another cart. Will he lose his last cart? And he barely gets it down going into the second stage with just one cannon cart left alive. Oh, that is, I, I know he's kind of counting his blessings here. He definitely would not have wanted to, definitely would not want to start out the match here up against uh, C6 Shrimp with a fail. But now here's the big issue is time. He has three cannon carts and he is, again, one of the best players in the world. And look at this approach. This is a really smart approach. He's going to be going in from the very top. And if he, can if he can take down that cannon, he's going to be able to send in another cannon cart to go take down the multi-mortar. And oh, there is an archer tower just in the middle of nowhere. This is clearly a mistake from C6 Shrimp. That archer tower should be inside the base. It looks like he must have moved around the base and forgot to put it inside. That is going to be very difficult to... Um, to, I don't know what C6 Shrimp was thinking there. It's going to be hard to defend now. It looks like we got the cannon carts going into the ranges of all the defenses. And now he's going to go and try and take out the multi-mortar. Look at this, outranging everything. That cannon cart is going to 1v1 the multi-mortar with no issue whatsoever. And now he's just going to send the other cannon carts in. He's going to take down the double cannon. He's taking down the cannon on the other side here. And he has plenty of time. He is going to be able to finish off this base quite easily. Um, now the question here is, is he going to be able to get to all the corners? There are so many corner buildings on this base here. It is going to be, it's going to be quite in, uh, a big question. Can he get to all the corner buildings in time? He did start his battle machine. I'm just now seeing that from the very corner here with going onto the archer tower. And look, the guard post units, the guard post units, he did not trigger onto the archer first. That is going to take out the cannon. That is a big mistake from him. He should not have pushed it forward that soon. And now, now it's looking like it's going to be a time fail. I don't know if he's going to be able to pull this one off. Unfortunately, he does outrange the cannon. He does outrange both the cannons right now. The battle machine will go in and tank for everything. Now he can move both his cannon carts forward. Hopefully this isn't going to be a big issue. Yeah, I know <laughs> this one's lagging a little bit. I have my settings changed, but it's not going to affect it till the next one. So do forgive me. But I don't know if he gets this one in time. This might be a 197 or a 193. He needs to take down the zappies before it takes down the uh, cannon cards. Luckily, he does. But with 13 seconds up, this is not going to be the six star to start off the stream. That is not what you want to see from the very first attack. And now C6 Shrimp is looking like he can come in and clutch up this attack, giving them a pretty easy lead just to start it out. So that is the very first attack. And it was definitely, definitely very close. I mean... That's really not what you want to see in the very first attack here. C6 Shrimp, again, as I mentioned, we see that his finishes, I mean, he has three number one finishes in the world here, and that is a huge amount of finishes to have. So with that, I mean, obviously he knows what he's doing. He is definitely going to be able to take out Fury's base, I would assume. But Fury, his little trick he has up his sleeve is he is a really good base trapper, and he does know C6 Shrimp. He knows what strategies he likes to use. So I'm assuming that he's going to be able to uh, try and trap Shrimp. Uh, C6 Shrimp, as I mentioned, one of the best players in the world, though. He knows how to avoid those traps, how to stay out of any of the issues. So I'm feeling like he's going to be quite good at being able to avoid that. So I'm really, really hoping to see a pretty good match here. I mean, we have this is probably the best, uh, most evenly match of the day. So I'm going to be very interested to see that and how it plays out. But we'll have to see. I mean, we see Fury. He is well. He doesn't have the number one. He still has all the number two. So that is going to be looking really solid for him. And it looks like C6 Shrimp is going to be going in up against Fury here in one moment. And this is going to be a very, very interesting second part of the match here. I mean, obviously he needs to make sure he gets the finish here. He, if he gets a six star, that'll put this team immediately in the lead and already be starting off Midnight Bash to look like they're going to be winning the first match. They are the favorited team here. And with roughly about 30 seconds to go here, we'll be getting into the next attack. And it's going to be working very, very well. So I'm very interested to see how Shrimp is going to take down the base. I mean, Shrimp, he knows every single strategy there really is to know. I mean, there's baby dragons, Pekkas. He knows, he knows dropships and minions, of course. If he didn't, I'd be a little concerned for him. 
and so he is definitely going to have a little bit of a competitive edge up against Fury, and Fury is just hoping that he can convince Shrimp to take the bait and go in up against a bad base or go in with a bad approach and get completely uh, like wrecked here. That is the dream here that Fury has, I would assume, and it looks like they're posting up, and let's go get into the next attack. It is going to be C6 Shrimp up against Fury. So we have them in now, and look at the space. So C6 Shrimp has dropships and minions selected. I hope he doesn't use that because that is definitely not the uh, most skillful thing to see. And perfect. He's changing the cannon carts. Hopefully he doesn't use cannon carts and dropships because that would be kind of tragic. But we're going to go ahead and now... Okay, this isn't... Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> this is interesting. So he's bringing in archers with this strategy. Usually you want to bring in barbarians and I, I would assume he's going to go down here because look, there's the archer tower and there's the roaster and the mega tesla you can get with cannon carts. But with the archers, he's not going to be able to take down that archer tower and he's not going to be able to tank for the cannon carts. So this is going to be a very, very iffy approach here. If he's going to really go for this here because I'm assuming he's going to put both the cannon carts down by the builder hall, use the archers to test for traps, but it's that will probably work this is what i told you fury is going to be trying to bait shrimp and shrimp is just hopefully not going to fall for it here but it looks like he might go for it so can he recover this if he gets caught so two and one the match and <laughs> okay this is he's putting in the archer up at the top and the cannon cart comes in at the top here that's going to be able to take down the lowered archer tower and now he's starting in another archer all the way onto the elixir collector. Is he going to put down his cannon cart there too? He's out of range of the lava launcher. This is smart. This is really smart. Look at this archer tower is not going to hit the cannon cart. So now he's going to take down the roaster and the lowered archer tower here. And that is going to hopefully let him dodge the bait here. I'm very interested to see if we see any Teslas pop up. If we're going to see any push traps over by that archer tower. Because that is definitely where I'm pretty sure Fury would have assumed he would go in from. And here's the example. Shrimp is just one of the best players in the world. He's going to go with a safer approach that is going to allow him to avoid any traps because no one would have expected this. Fury definitely would not have expected him to go from this corner. He, I think, just would have thought he's going to go for the easy, quick value and hope that he can just uh, power his way through the traps here. So now we're going to have to see if Shrimp is going to be able to pull this off. And can he finish off the second stage? Because obviously there's going to be a bunch of traps here, I'm assuming, by the lowered archer tower. Let's go see if they're going to fly in there. And we see there's going to be... there's Okay, yeah, look, there's three Teslas. He, he clearly thought he was going to go in from down there. We saw all three Teslas. And now the Battlecopter is just sitting there. He's taking his time. He's going to be taking out that... Uh, Crusher, and then he's just getting ready to send in his baby dragons here. He can probably, yep, moves the cannon cart forward to make sure he's going to take out the archer tower. And now here come the baby dragons, and this will probably be a really clean, uh, clean work through the base. He's going to use battlecopter ability. There is that ability, and now that was perfect. That was such perfect abilities. I mean, he's going to have maybe all three baby dragons surviving the stage here, and the two cannon carts. Does he keep that other baby dragon? He does. This is just a perfect attack. This is the perfect attack with all of his, his whole army is surviving except for some archers. I mean, this just shows you why he is one of the best players in the world, why he has three number one finishes, because he, he, uh, he just completely destroyed the space. I mean, look down at the troops available tab. He has his whole army com like all there, and he is going to be able to completely overpower this base now, I would assume. So... This is this is definitely showing us why C6 Shrimp is regarded as one of the best players in the entire world here. Three number one finishes, and now we just got to see him absolutely destroy the second stage because, I mean, there's almost nothing left here. There's really no reason this should be too difficult. So why don't we go ahead and we'll see how he can do this. I mean, this should be a pretty easy second stage here. Let's go just give it a second there. Um... I guess he's kind of planning it out. He's probably going to use the cannon cards down there by that cannon, I would assume, because he can get two firecrackers all the way down there. And that should let him get through the uh, cannon and both the firecrackers, and that should work pretty well. So we're just going to give it a second. There we go. We see both the cannon cards down at the bottom. I'm surprised there weren't any push traps there, because this is definitely where you want to trap it, if you're going to trap it. But um, we're going to go see the battle copter now is going to work onto the builder hall. Look at the cannon carts. He's probably playing on his phone. We see him moving one at a time there really quickly. But now he's going to be taking out the cannons at the over there. Then he's going to be able to take out the firecrackers. And now, yep, there goes the firecrackers. Sorry about the lag. I promise it'll be better. Um, now we got the battle copter working on the builder hall. And look, he has, he has five baby dragons, three baby dragon abilities. I mean, if this is not a six star, I think I might just kick, uh, what's his name? I'm just going to kick him out of the tournament if he cannot pull this one off because he has so much left remaining. 
we see him easily take out the builder hall now he's easily going to take out the firecracker there is only two firecrackers remaining i don't think he's going to lose a single baby dragon in this attack and this was a perfect hit i mean look he has all his whole army is still alive all five baby dragons he has both the cannon cards that was such a perfect attack here and that is a beautiful showing of why c6 shrimp is one of the best players in the world and this is definitely a perfect start for them putting them into the lead now so i mean uh, this was this was kind of expected we thought that c6 shrimp was going to come out kind of punching here and that is exactly what he did he had just such a like a perfect hit there i mean there was so much in there i i just didn't expect any of that to happen to be honest like i did not i did not see the approach he was going to use i did not see him avoiding those traps i thought he was going to fall for the traps and it would be kind of a little bit closer than it should be but luckily oa fury was able to um <laughs> Uh, get such a close attack on the other stage there that it did not completely put them in the a bad position it is still going to be super close and it's still going to be very difficult for them to overcome especially considering how their team is i mean i'm not going to say will is a bad player sorry nose boy but let me go back to this here so we can see them i'm not going to say nose boy is necessarily a bad player but we do see he does have the uh lowest top finish overall so he definitely is looking at the disadvantage here on the team, and considering Jopo, the t uh, teammate for Midnight Bash, who's going to be up against Noseboy, it is definitely going to be a difficult thing for him to pull off to try and win that 1v1. It will be showing, like, is he going to be able to do this? Um, so, I mean, if he can pull this off, we're going to see a really big upset from them. Sorry, it's just a blank screen. Forgive me. And then now we're going to see it's going to be Jopo up against will next i think nose boy is going to be attacking jopo here in a moment let's go see i'll go see when the schedule is it should be any minute now when he's going to go against him so we have uh we're going to have nose boy going in up against jopo it looks like at 12 24 and that is just one minute away so we are going to be seeing that attack here just in a second and it's going to be really interesting i mean we need to see him get a really solid six star here or high five star to keep his team in the running here and then we need to see a really big defense from uh nose boy to pull this one off and it looks like they're going in now so let's go hop in and see how this goes so we have nose boy also known as will he is going to be going in up against jopo and it looks like jopo is going to be running c6 shrimps base he built last season and this is not an easy base we see jo nose boy has six drop ships selected i really hope he doesn't use all six of these drop ships here that is going to be um definitely a little unfortunate so i'm hoping there's not going to be any of the drop ships being used we're going to have to go ahead and see will yep he's, he does change it up he is going to be switching to the cannon carts and the baby dragons and the archers that is gonna still be difficult so what i'm assuming he's going to do here is he's probably going to go in for the air bombs over there and if he can take down the air bombs and then take down the roaster on the other side, he's going to be able to get down two big air defenses. And then the baby dragons and the battle copter should finish off the base here. It is still going to be quite a difficult test here. This base, I, I've used the same exact strategy against it so many times. And I've had so many fails here. So, I mean, those air bombs are definitely going to be the... Okay, and he's starting in from the top with the cannon cart. That That is an interesting place to start from. I, I don't really know what he's doing there. Um, he does start for the air bombs on the other side, so he is still going to be going for those air bombs, but the cannon card up at the top, look, he already finds a bomb here. Now, it doesn't look like, I think those are the same traps that were on the base previously, so it is definitely going to be quite interesting to see if he is still going to be using the same traps he usually used on the base, or if he trapped it specifically for Noseboy here. So, I'm expecting to see a giant bomb by the air bombs, and that'll definitely... Uh, make this a little bit more difficult I just I don't see what Will's plan is here he is taking down the giant cannon with the battle copter but I think that might be a waste to be honest this might leave him with very few troops left alive so he has the baby dragon ability that's going to take out the lava launcher it will not hit the archer tower though so he's going to have to use an archer oh actually he may not because look the ba baby dragon might clean it up oh hits a bomb okay um I don't know about this one this one's looking really really close so he's he needs to take down the archer tower he needs to take down the double cannon he has to waste a lot of time here on both those buildings so this one's going to be close he does find a giant bomb with the archer and that's going to let this cannon card now go take out the base oh look the roaster is so close if he, he needs to pause this immediately he oh okay i think he's good yeah he's out of range okay 
So now he's going to be able to take down the roaster. And now it comes down to time. Does he have enough time if he hits any giant bombs? That is going to make this a really, really big issue. So he needs to make sure and hope that he does not hit any giant bombs here. We're just going to see, can he take out the base in time? It's going to be very, very... It's going to be very close to be honest. We're going to we're going to have to uh, I don't know. I don't know. This is not what he needs. He has 17 seconds left. I don't know if he has enough time here. Look, the cannon cart's going through a wall. I don't know if that's good or bad. It, luckily, it was already taken down a bit. So, he is on to the clock tower now. He's found some bombs. 8 seconds left. He might barely be able to get this one. It looks like he is going to take it out with 3 seconds remaining on to the second stage. He is keeping his team in the running here. If he did fail here, that would be almost a guaranteed loss for his team. So now we see he has a very big chance here. And this this looks like it could 6-star. I mean, it, and he needs to be careful for push traps. There, he has to take down a lot here. And he is has the minions selected. I don't know what they're going to do because you see all these firecrackers there. He does not have the battle copter to help support. So it is going to be very interesting to see whether or not he... Okay, he switches the baby dragons. I still don't know. I would personally say carts would probably be the best option here. But again, he is a top player too. He's beaten me in 1v1, so I can't really say anything. These air firecrackers are just going to be a big pain. Oh, I would not have started a cannon cart there. That is going to be... There are always always going to be push traps over there. So he needs to hope that Jopo, for some reason, did not put a push trap there. But uh, always letting it drive... No, he barely finds one. I thought he thought he dodged it. Luckily, that does test for a Tesla. But now he's already lost a cart in the very beginning. And we're going to have to see. So we have the Baby Dragon working on to the multi-mortar. He's going to send in another multi-mortar. And it is going to take, uh, sorry, another Baby Dragon to finish off that multi-mortar. And now the cannon carts he has left remaining need to somehow take down the rest of the base. And this is looking just like Furies. It looks like just like Furies, it's going to be a very close match here. So we're going to have to go ahead and see. Um, can he get this one down in time? This is a very similar second stage that we saw Fury go against. There are going to be both those corner buildings. He just started in his battle machine from the very corner. So we're going to have to go ahead and see. Can he take down the whole base here in the time he has left alive for him? I mean, this. I, I th it looks like he only has one cannon cart remaining. I don't know what happened to the other one. He had... No, he didn't. Have, okay, I thought he brought in more than two cannon carts. No, he did not. That, yeah, just with one cannon cart remaining, he can send it in. It's going to go in for the cannon. That's. This is just looking like it's going to be a very, very close thing. He has 50 seconds left. I, I'm going to have to call it out. This looks like it's going to be a 197%. I mean, if it's not that, it's going to be a little bit lower, but it's looking like it's going to be very, very high, but it's not going to be a six star. And what this means is if Jopo comes in and then gets a six star, that is going to be a huge change here. And that's going to let him them now take the lead um, and just kind of run away with it because now it'll be creator against creator. We already know uh, Clash Bashing has a little bit more practice. Is this battle machine going to die? Uh, no, he does barely pull it off. It is probably going to get killed by the Crusher though, unfortunately. Okay. This is going to be a little a little bit of a uh, tall order here. He has 15 seconds left. Can he at least get the 197 and get his team some pretty good um, some pretty good percentage here? Th that would be pretty important. It looks like he is going to be able to pull that off. I think he does get 197, but that is not the attack they were looking for. That is still going to put them behind now if Jopo gets a 6-star. Luckily, they do have the percentage lead here, so that's going to help them a whole lot, but we're going to have to just kind of hope that Jopo fails if they want to have any chance there. I mean, if Jopo fails here, it's going to make this a very, very big... Um, big shift if jopo gets like a two star or something it's gonna be a big shift we do know uh will is a very good base builder here so we know that this is kind of his uh forte is building bases he's gonna definitely be hoping to defend against uh uh jopo here we know jopo he he is a really versatile attacker but at the same time the nerves are here and he also he may run into some issues that he's not expecting he might run into some traps he might run into something he is really just not thinking he's going to get us all Jipiro gave me a donation thank you Jipiro I'm so glad you're enjoying thank you for sticking around I'm really excited I was a uh, very very glad to actually get this going I know you're interested in it before then so thank you for the donation let's go ahead and see when the next match will be starting here it should be pretty soon and this this one kind of determines who's going to be the winner I mean we know the creators are kind of the weakest link here so these pro players they need to make sure they're giving the creators the best chance they can and it looks like they're about to go in now and we have jopo up against will so let's go ahead and switch here we have okay this is this is oa fury's base he built so this this is going to be a very very 
interesting attack here. Okay, Jopu looks like he knows what to do. This base, you use you use two cannon carts, you use three baby dragons, barbarians. It is a six star every time. So unless Jopu makes a big mistake here, this is going to be a six star with no questions asked. And this is definitely, I would not have run this base, especially up against C6 Shrimp's team. I mean, there's obviously going to be some baits down here by the Archer Tower. We know that that's what he's expecting, and so he's definitely going to bait it, but with these Barbarians, you can usually avoid all of the traps, so I am I'm a little nervous for how well this is going to go. I mean, Jopo is going to need to hopefully pull this off. Jopo does prefer dropships and P.E.K.K.A.s, and so this is definitely not an attack he's probably practiced with recently. This will be very interesting to see. This is a very difficult strategy to pull off, and... Let's go ahead. Uh, looks like he is about to start here. Now let's go see if he's going to be able to start it and pull this off. He should start it right onto the laboratory. Um, so, oh no, oh no, no, that is really bad. I think I think he's in range of the Archer Tower here. This is a big. This is exactly what Goated is looking for. He needs to put a barbarian in front of the Archer Tower to make sure he's tanking there. But this is looking really bad. He has to move his cannon carts forward now, and they're going for the barracks. They get hit by the giant cannon. Everything is going wrong. The archer tower is targeted onto the cannon carts. Now the cannon carts are getting hit by the double cannon, and just like that, Jopo has used four camps to take down one defensive building. This is exactly what go to players wanted to happen, and now it's about trying to secure the two star here. There is no possibility. Every single big defense is up still. There is no possibility that he's going to be able to get to the second stage here. So he just needs to make sure he gets 50%, gets the Builder Hall, gets out of there, and keeps his team at least alive here. That was a huge mistake. That was so, so perfect for go to players. This is exactly what they're hoping would happen. And I... <laughs> wow, that, this was... This was kind of miserable. I'll be honest. I'm sorry, Jopo, but that, I mean, this is definitely going to put, now Clash Bashing is going to need to come in here and actually clutch up. So we have the first Baby Dragon. That's just going to get the ba Battle Copter through. He puts the second Baby Dragon. Now he's not going to get the Builder Hall. He's not going to be able to take down the Builder Hall here because the Battle Copter is not going to make it there. That was a huge mistake too. I don't know what he was thinking. He needs to secure the Builder Hall, and he puts down the Battle Copter and the Baby Dragons all together, meaning now this is going to be a 58% one star, and that was a big mistake to make. That is a really big mistake to make. That is going to completely sway the entire war. Jopo, the nerves must have gotten to him. I mean, I've been in this position. I've been in a tournament where I just made a terrible attack. I just got nervous, but this was a really, really big mistake here. So, I mean... Jopo's going to need to hope he's going to be clutching up by Clash Bashing because now it's going to put the score to, I believe, 10 stars to 7 stars. So they are not out of this. This is not like the home village because there is a lot more stars you can get per attack. So that does mean that Clash Bashing can come in here and win this for this team. But he's going to need to hopefully get a 6 star or get a 5 star or something. And Alvaro is going to need to mess up. They need Alvaro to do bad and they need Clash Bashing to do good. Again, if we go ahead and look over here. Alvaro does have the disadvantage here, but it is not by much. He is just a little bit lower. And so once the maintenance break is over, we're going to be able to hop in and hopefully see this final match start. The other attacks, we were kind of preparing for the maintenance break here by getting the other attacks ready before then, but we have not done these ones yet. So we do have a good window of time. We're going to see, you see Clash Bashing, this team is completely favored to win. I mean, you have the best player in Builder Base history, C6 Shrimp. You have a top 10 finisher, Jopo. You have Clash Bashing, who has 5,065 trophies. I think that is nearly 100 more than Alvaro has. Yep, nearly 100 more. So everyone's expecting Midnight Bash to be the winner here. We're just going to have to hope that that's going to be the case. I mean, I would love to see I would love to see a just from behind clutch here from uh, Clash Bashing. I mean, the creators, we weren't really expecting the creators to be the players here who were going to kind of clutch the matchup. We were really expecting to happen is like the creators are going to kind of be the tiebreaker and the top players are just going to get six star after six star. I mean, it is very surprising here that we saw such a big one star fail to start off the match here, especially from one of the best players. Oh, I'm sorry, my transition got a little messed up there. But we're just going to go back to the team and look at it here. I mean, um, I'm a little bit nervous to see how this will go. We have the maintenance break ending soon here, which is when we're going to be getting in there. And it looks like Alvaro is going to need to win this one for his team. He should be up very soon. So let's go ahead and see how this is going to go. I mean, anything can happen here. We, if, if Clash Bastion clutches us up, this will be a very good moment for him. That's going to give him some pretty good content. 
but if he's not going to be about to, it's it's uh, it's definitely going to be a little little disappointing. So why don't we go ahead and see whether or not we are going to be getting into the <laughs> maintenance break soon? It was a little unfortunate. I swear the tournament was planned ahead of time, and then out of nowhere we just we got hit with the maintenance break. But luckily we are still on schedule here, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, the camera and the. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I'm just, I'm kind of shocked to see that Jopo made such a big mistake there. I mean, it was all expected that he would easily win that 1v1, so that was kind of shocking. Let's go ahead and go back to over here. Just give me a moment. I mean, this is anything can really happen here. And we are out of the maintenance break, meaning it is about time for Alvero and Clash Bashing to come on. And we're gonna go ahead and get them kind of ready to go. So, um, the, any we're almost gonna be getting into the next attack here. I'm really glad that the maintenance break ended at a perfect time. It ended right as we needed it to. So, let's let me go ahead and mention them there, and we will be getting into the next attack here very very shortly. So, uh, anything again. Clash bashing needs to get a five star or a six star. I mean, ideally he's gonna want to get a um, a six star, but I mean even a four star could win this. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how this is going to go. Again, I'm going to be honest, they don't have really high hopes for the creators here. But um, we will have to just hope for the best. I know Clash Bashing has done a lot of training with C6 Shrimp, one of the best players in the world. So, I mean, it will be very interesting to see here. Did that training pay off? Is that training going to allow him to now take the win here up against Alvaro? So it looks like Alvaro is going to be going in first up against Bash. Um... We'll have to, one second, let me just let them know to post it first. There we go. So, I mean, go ahead, put your put your, uh, put your your votes in on who you think is going to win here. We are going to be going into it very, very soon. That maintenance break was really good timing that it finally ended at the perfect moment. And once Alvaro is online, we will be ready to go into it. Why don't we go ahead and we'll go take a look at the scores again. We are in the game now, and the scores currently, we have 10 to 7 with two attacks from both teams and the percentage is definitely in the hands of Midnight uh, Bash. They are definitely way further down here. I mean, it will be interesting to see who's going to win this off. Now we have the attack has been posted and all it is up for is for Alvaro to come in and once Alvaro is here we will be going into the attack. So I feel like the nerves might be getting to them a little bit. I mean this is really a lot of them don't have any experience with the builder base before this and it's going to be very very interesting to see whether or not they're going to be able to hopefully pull off a three star. I mean that is that's all we can ask for them. So we're just waiting on Alvaro here and then once Alvaro is here we will be all set. Hopefully he will be coming on soon. Uh, I mean, uh, this is going to take a little second. Yeah, we got a got a little s partial technical difficulties. And yep, here he is. He is on, and it is now up for him to go in. So let's go ahead, and it's time to go see. Yeah, thank goodness I'm not streaming the chat. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's just waiting for him to go in. He has just shown up in chat, and he should be going up shortly. Let's go see. Let's go see. Uh, taking a second to match up and now he is finally into it. Let's go ahead and this is the live attack we got. Alvaro versus, oh, he is using a good base too. Oh no, this is going to be, this is going to be, I fail against this base frequently. So this is going to be a very, very interesting match here because what you really want to do against this base is do barbarians up at the very top here at the archer tower and you want to use baby dragons as well. And so the Barbarians and Cannon Carts are going to come here. You can take out the Air Bombs, you can take out the Archer Tower and the Double Cannon. So this is definitely a difficult base. And the, the top players gave the creators bases to use just to make it even more challenging. So uh, it is a legitimate base here. So it's going to be quite difficult to see whether or not he's going to pull this one off. I mean, I'm very nervous here. And it looks like he is going to be taking all the time he can take here to kind of think out how he wants to do this. So ideally, if Alvaro gets, uh, let's go see the score. If, I think if he gets a, let's see, a four star, he wins this for them. And look at this cannon cart over here. This is interesting. So he's going to be trying to use the cannon carts to funnel out everything. So he has both cannon carts on both sides of the base here. And he's just letting them funnel out everything. He's not going to be using them to try and get too much value. So I mean, that that's better than trying to use something that wouldn't work. Now he's going to be using the battle copter over here on the builder hall 
So I'm interested. What is the plan here? What does he think is going to happen? And how is he going to pull this one off? I mean, this is a difficult base. He does have his baby dragon set up really nicely to go just straight into the base from any of these sides here. It's just the big question. Will How is he going to take down this huge cluster of air defenses? I mean, that's going to be quite difficult. So here comes the first baby dragon. There's the second one. And he's going to splash onto the... Mega Tesla. Now he has the cannon cart. He needs to pause that or it's going to go into range of the lava launcher. Okay, it's in range of the lava launcher. Okay, battle copter ability needs to be used now too. Um, let's go see. Let's go see. If he can... If he can use, okay, he just paused the cannon cart. I would, he needs to use battle copter ability immediately. Okay, he needs to move cannon cart and oh, it's gonna be, wait, 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 wait. I think he gets this. Maybe it might be time, but oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. He just has one cannon cart alive. This looks like it's gonna be a super high two star, but because this cannon cart up at the very top got absolutely obliterated by the lava launcher, this is unfortunately looking like it's gonna be a little bit difficult for him to pull off now. I mean, this clock tower, we, it, it is half health. Um, it, he needs to let his cannon cart just completely drive. He needs to, once he takes down this lower dark tower, just to let it walk. I don't know if he's going to get this though. I'll be honest. It's going to be quite difficult. This is not like, this is definitely a really solid first attack from the creator. I'm really glad to see that they actually did so close. I mean, if he just had that other cannon cart alive, it was just a very small mistake that is going to make this going to be a time fail now. So that is really, really unfortunate. But I mean, he is still getting a super solid two star and that's going to put them in a really nice play, uh, pace here to defend. There goes the cannon cart and that is going to be it. So we have our next attack, which is going to be that 90 percent two star not a terrible attack i'll be honest that was a lot better than i was expecting unfortunately alvaro just lost that one cannon cart and that made it all kind of die so um it is unfortunate it is what it is but that was actually a super solid attack here and a really good start from the creator i mean a lot of people were expecting the creators to like throw down some drop chips throw down some minions and just let them go and probably one star that was that's the expectation from all the creators because a lot of people thought it was going to be more difficult for them but on on surprisingly he is using a really good skillful strategy he is doing it actually quite well and he has nearly pulled it off there so in about two minutes or really whenever clash bastion will be coming in now and we're gonna be going into the last attack here and so that means if we go ahead and take a look at what his overall stats here are for the tournament we have with three attacks go to players they are at 12 uh, stars and with two attacks midnight bash is at seven stars and midnight bash needs to get a six star here to win this they need a six star so if they don't get a six star this one's going to be all but over for them and they'll be knocked down to the losers bracket luckily they're not going to be completely eliminated from the tournament but that is um, definitely going to be a tall order. Can Clash Bashing here get the six star and finish this base off? It is going to be a super, super big question for him. I mean, it's going to be quite difficult. And of course, we got to figure out what base did go to players give him? What base is Alvera going to be using? And so that's going to be a very, very interesting, difficult thing for Bash to be able to pull off. We do not know what strategy these players taught the creators. Each creator was taught by the... Um, each creator was taught by the players, right? So we don't really know which strategies the players decided to teach the creators. A lot of the players, they don't, they can't teach the creators like cannon carts are really big, high tech strategies super quickly. So it is um, definitely a little bit, a little bit difficult. And now we're going to be going into our next attack here, which is going to be clash bashing up against Alvaro, and he's going to be using Nose Boy's base here that he built, and. This is not what you like to see. Clash Bashing also has baby dragons. This base is more of an anti cannon card base here. And I mean, sorry, more of an anti dropship base. But wait a second. Bash is going to be switching to Pekka's. This this could be interesting. I'll be very interested to see. He's picking what Pekka dropship. Okay. That that is a very. I mean, look. If it's going to work, it's going to work. And looks like he's going to be using Geopo's variant. Now, if he can take down this double cannon, maybe even this archer tower, that'd be pretty solid. It looks like he's switching to another cannon cart. Um, okay, and he's going in with it. Okay, so oh, this this is dangerous. This is really dangerous. There are usually push traps over here. And he puts the cannon cart immediately into the mortar mode. And he starts one from up top. Okay. I hope for Bash's sake, he is not going to try and take out this double cannon because that will take out his cannon card. He will be in range of 
of the oh he hits a push trap down there he immediately gets trapped perfect base building from Noseboy over here so he already has lost one cannon cart and this is going to make it significantly harder I told you that is a very dangerous place to come in from and we saw immediately why that is and look he does go for the double cannon that's in range of the lava launcher he's going to lose both the cannon carts immediately so now he's going to go ahead and start in the pekkas but this one's going to be a little difficult this one will be a little difficult I think the fact that he hit that very first push trap with the cannon cart is probably going to be tripping him all the way up we have a tesla over here that's going to make sure the dropship doesn't go in so he uses the pekka ability that's a really good pekka ability he has another pekka ability this double cannon is barely holding on so unfortunately you know i don't know this might he isn't necessarily out of this uh, i mean this is going to be very close with this with this double cannon barely alive one hp double cannon i think it's going to be too much for this pekka to pull all the way off here it looks like clash bashing as well is going to hopefully tie with the creator but unfortunately it does not look like this one's going to go through now this was a, also a very good attempt he i mean he lost two cannon cards here and he's still going to nearly six, uh, three star this so it was definitely a tall order to have him use, but we do see a really, really solid defense from this team over here. So that is going to be it. That does put the teams at the final win here. We saw that from Clash Bashing, he just he wasn't able to get to the second stage, unfortunately, but I mean, it was still a really, really solid attempt here. So, I mean, I'm glad that we saw such a good attack from both players. I mean, I was expecting dropships and minions, and dropships and minions are clearly not the attacks you really want to see. So... This was a really good attempt from both creators. I'm really glad they both pulled out some really actually interesting strategies. Both of them were using cannon cards. So, I mean, that's definitely what you'd like to see from these uh, top players. I mean, I was kind of nervous about the tournament. I was worried we we're going to see just a whole lot of spammy dropships and minions and even dropships and pekkas with no cannon cards or anything. But we do see both teams here are going to be using some pretty good attacks here. So we're going to go ahead we are going to go try and figure out who's going to be up against next that will be pushing forward uh, the go to players into the winner's bracket and that's going to put Midnight Bash immediately into the loser's bracket. But luckily this does not mean it is over yet. There is still a chance for both teams to win even though uh, Midnight Bash is going to lose this very first one. There is still a really solid chance that there is going to be a comeback from him. I mean, we know C6 Shrimp is the best player in the game right now, widely regarded as the best player of all time in Builderbase 2.0. So it is definitely, definitely not going to be over yet. We're going to go see if I can get you guys some statistics here from both the teams. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think this was a very big upset. I don't think a lot of anybody who was watching this match was really going to expect this. I mean, we saw Jopo that failed definitely probably cost the team there. I mean... If, if he did not fail there, if he got a 5-star or a 6-star, that would have definitely pushed his team into the lead there, and they would have been able to win that. It is very somewhat unfortunate that Jopo just, he ran into a bunch of mistakes, and he was just not expecting all the traps he ran into. So, I mean, I'm glad that uh, we do have a very, very first interesting match here. It's unfortunate Rocky wasn't able to pull this off over over Midnight Bash and get them into the win there, but it is a very, very good start. So why don't we go ahead? We'll be getting into the next match somewhat shortly, and we're going to go ahead and go find the statistics here from this match. And it was a it was a very surprising turn of events here. I was not expecting Midnight Bash to be uh, losing this one. Um, I mean, I mean, Jopo can't put it too much onto himself, but I mean, it definitely would be kind of on him. I mean, he definitely just kind of went in on accident. He made a few mistakes, and that just that definitely messed up his team here. So, if we go ahead and we're going to take a look here at the final statistics here, we got from oh, this is not sized well at all. We got from Oe Fury. He got a five star, one hundred ninety three percent, and then Alvaro got a two star with ninety percent, and then Noseboy got a five star, one hundred ninety seven percent. These were all solid attacks. And then we go over here. We saw that C six Shrimp started it off with a six star, really solid. We saw Clash Bashing. Unfortunately, got the two star with an eighty six percent. And then Jopo got the one star with the 58%, which just he could not come back from that. And it was too much to ask for the teams here. So this was a very, very good first match to see start off. And I'm really, really glad that we were able to really see some interesting things here. So I think what we should really do here now while we're waiting for the next match, the next match will be starting pretty soon here. Why don't we go ahead and just kind of see like what, what really went wrong here with Alvaro. So with Alvaro, he started in the cannon cards over here, and they were just going to be funneling out both sides here. This was a really smart plan. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to try and like say anything bad, but I, I, I was not expecting this over here. But we do see that the cannon cards on both sides here are going to be taken out. 
and just funneling out here. We have the Battlecopter starting in quite immediately, and the idea here is really smart because the Battlecopter here, he only needs to contest with the Archer Tower, so it's gonna charge up to the full ability really quickly here. And this was actually quite a solid attack, and this was really good, so let's go see the mistakes. So, first of all, with this Baby Dragon, I probably would have said use the ability a little bit sooner, and then with this one over here, he probably should have used the ability sooner, that way he could start the uh, cannon cart, and here's the big one. He let this cannon cart all the way up at the top just go straight in and go straight for the Archer Tower, and that was fine because it was being tanked for by the uh, Baby Dragon, but what made this the issue is the Lava Launcher. The Lava Launcher just comes over here, takes out the cannon cart. What he should have done is just pause it. If he paused it and took out that Archer Tower, he would have been completely fine here, but because he loses that cannon cart, I mean, this even nearly in range of the Mega Tesla, and now here's the second mistake. He finds a Giant Bomb, but he pauses this cannon cart. That's where it becomes another mistake. So he pauses this cannon cart over here, and now it's just going to sit there. It's not going to take down this clock tower, and it's going to get clapped. We see the Battlecopter ability was perfect. That took out so much, but he just could not finish it off here. But if you just imagine here that there is one more cannon cart up at the very top, he would have been able to take out the clock tower, take out the camp, take out the gem mine, and we saw it was a very, very close, close attack here. I mean, if he had that one more cannon cart and it did not die to the lava launcher, this would have been a really, really solid attack and finished this one off with a possibly a four star five star really good attack from a creator now bash bash is he really his biggest unfortunate part is he kind of just got trapped there was really no good way to avoid it so we're going to go ahead and kind of go see what happened to bash so we go into the attack here and he's bringing in an interesting strategy already but there were just a few big mistakes so for one he's bringing in he's going to be bringing in two cannon carts here and you really he should not have done that because what he thought was going to happen here is up at the very top, he was going to be able to take out this very top double cannon, but that you cannot take out any building that is directly touching a lava launcher, and he just did not know that. So that cannon cart is just going to be killed. So what he should have done is just bring in the one, but also this was a very dangerous spot to put it. I mean, there are always push traps over here because this is such huge cannon cart value. If he got this cannon cart value, he would have gotten it perfect, but if he was going to try and go for this, he really should have put his cannon cart in a weird position that people wouldn't have expected. I don't know where the traps were on here i might go see if i can find them but the traps here were just uh too much for him and we see he hits a push trap immediately and that that is just a dead cannon cart and that is, he has nothing he can do about that doesn't even get a single shot off and then all the way over here this cannon cart up at the top i knew i thought this was what was going to happen when i saw him put it there i was already like oh please don't tell me no he goes straight into the lava launcher radius there so if he just if he used both those cannon carts and instead just took down this cluster of defenses down here, he could have dropped both dropships, maybe one onto the roaster to open up all these walls, one onto the Mega Tesla, and that would have been able to take out everything. I mean, just imagine he got that out of the way with the cannon carts. It's just he was not able to get quite the value he was looking for because of those, for one, there was a Tesla over here, so he had a waste of P.E.K.K.A. ability. I mean, this base, I'll be honest, they use this base because it is anti-P.E.K.K.A. dropship. This is a very difficult base to use this strategy on. And Bash, just, it was a tall order, but he still tried it, and it, he did a very noble attempt. I'm going to be honest, this was a lot closer than I would have expected, especially after losing 30% uh, of his army. You would have expected that this would have been a one-star or even worse, but he does pull this off quite miraculously, and it was a very impressive match. So, what we're going to go do now is we're going to go see what is our next match here. Our next match, we have the next team, which is going to be Hypnotized Minds. This team is kind of a powerhouse. We see they have uh, Lucky Cajun and Peter and Sir Moose. Lucky Cajun is always in the top of the United States. He is currently the number one player in the entire United States now. He has a best finish in number three in the world. Last season, he finished number 25 in the world. And right accompanied by him is Peter. Peter is number three in the world right now. And he has a best finish in number 16 in the world. And he, he really likes to play with these dropships and the minions. I mean, say what you will. I definitely would say they're not my favorite attack strategy. I do believe they're kind of skillless. But I, I do really, really like to see like how how they really uh, are going to pull this one off. I mean, dropships and minions, they are somewhat skillless, but they still do take a little bit of skill to do. Now, Sir Moose, he is on their team, and I'm going to say Sir Moose is probably one of the most experienced creators here. He had very, in the first season of Builder Base uh, 2.0, he got, I mean, I think a top finish here. I mean, we can go ahead and I'll go see if I can figure out what finish he had. He had a pretty solid finish, all things considered. He was in um, 
Midnight Bash for a little bit here as well. I mean, he was definitely all about the Builder Base when it first came out. His best finish was number 70 in the world at 2.0. So this is going to be a very menacing team here. But on the other side here, we have, this is an interesting one. It's going to be Children of Auto. This is, um, I know what you might be popping out to you is this logo and uh, popped out to me too. I asked them, uh, what would you like for a logo? And they just said, we want auto, but creepy. So here we are. Children of Auto has some really, really big players too. We have Galaxy O and Galaxy um, is a top player for France. He finished number six in the world last season and he is a really, really solid player. But we also got Sassion over here, SS I I don't even know how you pronounce it. He told me and then I kind of forgot. I think it's kind of French, but... He finished number one in the entire world two seasons ago. I mean, that is a super solid finish to get. He was up against OA Fury, and he still pulled it off, which definitely upset Fury a little bit, but he got a number one finish, and that was a super, super clutch match there. So additionally, we also have Beaker's Lab here, who is going to be matching up against Sir Moose. Sir Moose is going to be going in and hopefully kind of showing Beaker what's up, but Beaker has done a good amount of training. He was actually one of our... Uh, creators who did the most training here he was all about this from the second he learned about it he was all about learning about it and he was all in so he is only at 4400 trophies as opposed to sir moose's 5000 trophies and definitely sir moose with his uh number 70 finish in the world is looking like he's going to have a little bit of a competitive edge but it's going to be very interesting so how is it going to play out they're going to be going up against each other very soon i mean we have a few players in the tournament who have actually played the Builder Base 2.0 and done it pretty well. So, um, like for instance, we see that uh, Sir Moose is one of them. He has a number 7 D finish. We saw Itsu was pretty good in the very beginning of the Builder Base 2.0. And Clash Bashing as well. I believe he had, I think, like a top 200 finish in the very beginning season. Um, okay, he had, he had a top 600 finish. Very close though. But again, we do have some people here who do have a little bit of experience with the Builder Base 2.0. So it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not that's really going to work out well. So we do have the next match. This will be starting here in roughly th uh, three minutes. And who's going to be up first is Sir Moose will be up against Beaker first. We're going to be making it a little bit different here just because we have some timing changes. We got to make sure they get them to go. So we're just going to make sure they're all ready. But Beaker's Lab, again, one of the most practiced players here. Um, is going to be up against Sir Moose, and Sir Moose is, I, I do believe it's going to be a little bit um, tense here, but it'll be interesting. We'll have, let's go see who's up first. Up first is going to be Sir Moose up against Beaker's Lab first. Sir Moose is going to be starting it off. Um, it'll be, I don't, I don't know, I don't know who's going to win. I mean, obviously, we did give all the players bases, so it will be a little challenging, but um, Sir Moose, again, I mean, clearly I told you, he has a little bit of previous experience in this scene of the builder base. So we don't really know what's going to happen now. Uh, with Sion um, being on the team here, that is definitely going to boost our team a little bit. I mean, we see this is probably a pretty, pretty another even match here. I try to make all these matches as even as possible with a number three finish and a number 16 finish versus a number six finish and a number one finish. But also, if you look at Peter's best like, current placement in the world, he's number three in the entire world. So we're going to have to just kind of hope that there's going to, I mean be a pretty good match here. I, I hope that there aren't any too many fails. I mean, obviously, this, this tournament is mainly going to be... One minute, this is just not the right one. <laughs> you know, like three transitions in a row. This tournament obviously isn't necessarily too serious, but um, it will be interesting. Who is going to pull this off? We have to get Sir Moose to come to the clan pretty soon, and then we also got to get Beaker on. They should be coming on soon. So let's go ahead. Sir, Sir Moose is right now practicing. I mean, he's been practicing all morning. Um... Let me go to let him know to come back. Luckily. There we are. So I mean we're gonna we're gonna hope that this one is hopefully not too unbalanced here. I mean obviously we, we do know that Sir Moose has the advantage here, but I don't know. Who do you guys think is gonna win? Do you think it's gonna be hypnotized minds or do you think it's gonna be children of auto? I mean I'm kind of going for Children of Auto here just because I like the underdog story and uh, I, I'm really hoping that Beaker is going to kind of clutch one out. It is still obviously very difficult here. We don't really know how it's going to go, but I mean, I'm, I'm going for Children of Auto. I would love to see if they could actually pull this off, but it, it does look like Sir Moose definitely has the advantage here. So we're just waiting on him to come all the way out of his clan. He is doing just one practice match and then we're going to be getting into it very soon. So 
it looks like a lot of people are saying they they think Beaker's going to take it. I mean, me, Beaker's probably I, I, again he practiced one of the best practicing. He has bases from the top players. It will be very interesting to see how to work, but we're just having to take a minute here. We got. I don't know where Sir Moose is. He he left the clan to go do a practice match, and now he's not been back. Let me just go mention him. It's a little awkward though. I mean, obviously I just have to like message these people. Um, so it does take me a second because I'm kind of having a difficult time typing and speaking at the same time. But let me just go message him real fast. There we are. And there we go. So let's go ahead and we're going to go get an idea. We got some questionable people trying to join the clan, not part of it. But yeah, so I mean, I I'm going to go with Children of Auto. I mean, obviously Children of Auto has the more fun logo. Hypnotized Minds is definitely more of a weird one, but uh, Hypnotized Minds, again, These this was one of the first teams that was created here. Sir Moose, I'm hoping he doesn't do too too poorly, but again, we don't know what's really going to happen. It's a pretty even match, so we'll have to, we'll have to see how it goes. So just give us a moment while we get Sir Moose here. Still just waiting on Sir Moose to show up. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. We try to make this uh, flow as cleanly as possible. I mean, we had um, we had all the times listed out. Unfortunately, I think Sir Moose was just here four minutes ago. So he's probably still in a practice match. Let's just hope that he's going to come over here soon. And yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess this gives us more time to take little bets and everything. Let's go. Let's go see if he'll come in. Will children win this? I mean, uh, again, Children of Auto, uh, definitely, I mean, the the name, it was initially going to be something that had the word lab in it. And um, then some, I, I think someone suggested, like, what if we just do, like, Auto's children? And that it was, no one said anything after that. They're just like, yep, that's it. And the, they had a beautiful logo made for them as quickly as they could. And, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was, it was quite an uh, interesting logo. Definitely one of the weirder ones. I believe Sir Moose is just doing a practice match. He probably shouldn't have done a practice match this close to the tournament starting. I'm going to go ahead and invite him again. Um, but let's go see. That was four minutes ago, so he might still be in the next stage. So a little unfortunate that we're having him take a little bit of extra time. So I'm going to have to go message him again, ideally. Uh, I'm just assuming he's probably in the middle of an attack, and it's kind of taking him a second to get out of it. Um, Definitely, definitely gonna mess up a little bit of the flow of everything though. It's a little, a little annoying. So let's hopefully this doesn't go go terribly. I mean, I don't. I I mean we had at least the other people. They should be pretty um, on point, but this won't just take a second. All right, well, I don't know. We're going to have to go see. I'm going to have to. We have, a lot of, we have a lot of random people trying to join the clan here. I mean, obviously, when you have, like, the three biggest players in the world uh, in the same clan, it's going to show a lot of people, and they're going to want to be kind of interested in how do I get there, too. So hopefully the chat doesn't get mess too flooded. But, yeah, definitely should have practiced a little bit before then. Let me go message him real quick. Ah, uh, do we have him here? Nope. Okay, this is a bummer. He said he does one more friendly challenge, so he's he's gonna do another challenge. So we got like another six minutes. Uh, all right, cool. Well, I guess we'll just go do another overview on the teams here. I mean, I wasn't ideally not expecting this, but you know, maybe maybe we'll just go we'll go see if anyone's doing a live attack. Actually, we have a lot of people on the friends list here. Let's go see if anyone's just going to be doing a random live attack, and we'll just go watch that instead. It looks like they're actually joining back now, so it looks like we might have a good shot here. Um, okay, one minute. i gotta, I got to go to my chat and remove some dude. Um, probably should have got that on my computer. Stop delaying. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, we're just hoping that, this, that Sir Moose will be here somewhat soon. 
And yeah, so for everyone in the chat who is uh, randomly spamming a bunch of uh, things, uh, I'm sorry, I have to remove you. There we go, Sir Moose is back and we can actually start this match here real fast. So let's go ahead, mute this player, there we go. And now it is time to get ready for the next match and it should be Sir Moose up against first. And yeah, so sorry for the delay there. I mean, it, it definitely tried to get there as soon as we could. Sir Moose is finally back though, and we should be getting ready to go into the first match here. Once Beaker posts the friendly challenge, it'll be all set and we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and see when they'll be on. We have everyone should be getting ready to post everything up there. All right, perfect. Let's go see. Let's go see. All right, I mean, Beaker is about to be in soon. So, again, I feel like Beaker's team will probably take this. Um, that's more kind of hopeful because I really do kind of want them to win. They're probably my one of my favorite teams in the tournament here. I mean, Beaker's a really nice guy. We had him in the call for a really good amount of time. So, I mean, he's definitely one of my more uh, people I'm rooting for here because he, he just absolutely was very friendly, very communicative, and I'm just excited to see how he does. And we do have the match finally here, Sir Moose versus Beaker's Lab. And we have a very uh, interesting base here. I believe this is one that I built. And what is he going to go with? He's going with Baby Dragons. Uh, this is not a good idea. This is a really bad idea. Does he bring a cannon cart? He does. He, does. he brings a cannon cart. I don't know about this. This is this base is extremely anti cannon cart uh, and anti baby dragon. I mean, look, you have every single big air defense, and then you also have both the firecrackers and the lowered archer tower. You have two lowered archer towers. This is an interesting decision here. He starts the he doesn't. Well, I don't know what he's going for here. <laughs> Uh, he starts the cannon cart at the very bottom. I guess he's just trying to funnel out with that. Uh, I would have probably used cannon cart up top. I don't know if there's any Teslas here, though. Even though I built the base, I don't really remember where I put them. So this will be a very interesting one to start off with. I mean, Beaker uh, is definitely going to be using, hopefully, the best base. We have the battle copter coming in from this side. And this, this base was built to be anti-air. I mean, if it was an anti-P.E.K.K.A. base here, I would I mean would have probably seen this more coming. But this will be a really tall order here for Sumers to pull off. I mean, it's not out of it. Again, as I mentioned, he was one of the few players here who actually has previous experience in the builder base. It's just going to be very... Um, very difficult, I would say, to do this even still, just because look look at these baby dragons getting absolutely shredded in there. I mean, this battlecopter ability might get him some pretty good value. This may not be the end of the world. They're, oh, cannon cart. Okay, there are no bombs, it looks like. And he, I think he might be okay. I don't know. If there's a bomb here, that's going to be a really big deal. It looks like there's not, but it gets hit by the lava launcher. Oh, no. Oh, no. With one baby dragon remaining, can this cannon cart survive? Is it in the lava launcher fire, and it is dead. And that is going to be a defense here against Sir Moose. It's going to be a two-star 65%. I mean, I, I feel like it was maybe... Maybe a little difficult there. He definitely was at a little bit of a disadvantage there having to go with air. But, um... Definitely still a pretty, it was a good solid attack. I, I would say it was really impressive to see him try and use baby dragons instead of like a really dropship spam strategy. But now this means it's nearly Beaker's turn. Let's go ahead. Um, Beaker should be going in. We don't really know. Again, we do not know what these creators have uh, trained the other been trained to do. Like we, we don't know who's going to train the creators to use P.E.K.K.A.s and dropships. Who's going to train the creators to use um, just to use... Um, Pekkas or uh, baby dragons or cannon carts, but now we have Beaker coming in. Oh, this base, this base, you don't, this is a, oh, and look, Beaker has Pekkas selected. This is not a Pekka base. This is not a base you want to use Pekkas against. So if I were Beaker, I would, I would probably use dropship. I hate to say it, but I would use dropship and minions. I mean, cannon carts, I don't believe Beaker really could do cannon carts successfully against us, but this base is extremely anti-Pekka. I mean, look, you have the Roaster, the Mega Tesla, and a Double Cannon all in different compartments here. You have two Crushers. You, there's just so much here that is made just to disrupt Pekka pathing. This is going to be really difficult. So, obviously, these creators are going to be setting the, um, the bar here, and this is going to determine if Beaker can at least get higher than a two-star 65%, he's looking good. But if he cannot do that, then it's going to be difficult. So it looks like Beaker is going to stick with the Pekkas. And he does have some of the best players in the world. A lot of these players right now are in calls with their teams. So he does have one of the best Pekka attackers in the world, Sion, helping him out here. And here we go. So, I mean, a, 
I, I feel like he's going to try and put Battle Up Machine towards the laboratory. If he can put a giant onto that, um, yeah, that was the giant was a little bit late. Okay, but look, giant's finding some bombs, and look at these P.E.K.K.A. Okay, that bomber was super solid, actually. This may not be the end of the world. It is an anti-P.E.K.K.A. base, don't get me wrong here, but look at this. He is opening up so many of the compartments. Battle Machine does not get to the max stability, though. That hurts. That's really going to hurt here. Oh, Battle Machine goes down early too. That really, really hurts. That late giant is definitely going to put him in a hard place here. Now look, if he can get more than a 65% two-star here, that's all he needs. That is all they really are looking for him to do. And so let's see, can we get anything to go a different direction? I mean, look, all that's left here actually is the Mega Tesla and, and um, the Lava Launcher. So if it, it looks like he's going to be able to actually pull off getting more than 65% here. He's at 65% now. Hopefully, look at this bomber working down there. He gets down one more building. And let's see, are these low? He is not going to be able to pull off the six-star. But even still, he's going to be putting his team in the lead here. And it looks like he's going to be getting a 60, 70-something percent two-star, which you, you can say what you want to say about it. But that is still going to put his team in the lead. And it looks like uh, Otto's children are already starting off with the lead here. And this will be an interesting match for sure. I mean, that two star, a lot of people, I mean, it was, I mean, it's, it's again, not necessarily one of the perfect attacks you'll see here. But then again, he went up against an anti P.E.K.K.A. base. His battle machine got killed really easily. And even still, he was able to put his team in the lead there. So I'm really glad that his team was still in the lead. I, I, I mean, I, obviously, if it started off with a tie, that'd be a little unfortunate. We don't really have a good tiebreaker system. But what I would say here now is what they got to kind of do here is really just six star after six star. If, if Children of Auto is going to get two six stars in a row, they will be winning this match here. So let's go see when the next attack is going to fly in from here. We're going to go see that it's going to be at, I uh, believe, two more minutes here. So let me go let them know that it's going to be there. And in two more minutes, we're going to go ahead and have Peter up against Galaxy O. And it's going to be an interesting match. So let me go just make sure they are mentioned here so they can know to be ready. Hoping we don't run into any of the other issues we recently ran into. Um, but it'll be, Peter will be going up against Galaxy first. And it'll be a good match. So let's go ahead and look one more time at the matchup here. We do have the Peter. He is currently the number three player in the world, but his best finish is number 16. And he's going to be going up against Galaxy O and Galaxy O has a top six finish. They're going to be using some good bases and it is, it'll be a little bit of a tall order. So we're going to just wait for them to get on as soon as we can. They should be all on here soon. We have Galaxy. looks like he's already online and ready to rumble and it should also be Peter. So we're going to have Galaxy post for Peter real fast and then it'll um, for be time to go in for it. So I don't know. It's still it's still anybody's game. Obviously, top players still fail. We just because they have the lead here. We saw with Jopo. Jopo had a really unfortunate one star fifty eight percent. So I mean, it's it's definitely going to be uh, not a guaranteed win here. But top players are ridiculously good here at just I don't know. Just they just pump out six stars left and right. I mean, these players, especially Peter, for instance, who's at the top of the leaderboards. He's definitely going to be able to get into this. And now we are into the next attack here. We have Peter up against Galaxy O. And <laughs> this is the same base Jopo failed on. So we see Peter has selected dropships and uh, P.E.K.K.A.s. But if Peter knows anything about how to use Baby Dragons and Cannon Curse, he needs to switch to that strategy right now. Because that strategy is definitely going to be the optimal strategy to use against this base here. All you do is two Barbarians over here, two Cannon Curse, and you can take out the Roaster, Air Bombs, and Mega Tesla. Even with traps there, you usually get that. And look at him go. That is exactly what he's going to go for. It's just, we saw Jopo try it, and Jopo didn't pull it off. Now can he do it? He's going at a weird angle with the cannon carts. I'll be honest, this is not really an angle you want to see. But he, he has not found any traps, and you know, they may have not predicted this. They may have not thought that he would go with this. Everybody knows Peter is a very, very uh, notorious dropship user. So they, I'm, you know what I'm expecting? is a complete battlecopter bait. Yes, right there. A complete battlecopter bait. That was what I would... I mean, that, that's that's not surprising. Now, something that's confusing here is, look how he's using the baby dragons now. Um, he's he's not using his cannon cards to finish off everything. He's using the baby dragons. This is, is definitely going to be a waste of troops here. I don't know why he would put two cannon cards at two separate sides here. Again, it's not over. He's probably faced his base a thousand times. He probably has his own solution for it. 
and it looks like he's damaging up all aspects of the base here. Battlecopter ability on the giant cannon takes down everything. And, okay, he put his cannon cart into the range of the lava launcher. That, that's an interesting decision. I mean, I don't really know what he's doing there. Maybe, oh, look, lava launcher is 1 HP. He does get it down now. So unless he runs into a bunch of traps, he's completely fine. But there is one thing he needs to remember is up here with this battlecopter bait, there's probably going to be a bunch of air bombs there. That means his cannon carts are pretty much safe to go. They don't really need to worry about much, except, if I'm being honest with you, this might be a time fail. This might be a time fail two star. Um, the, these... Uh, Teslas are completely healthy. This gold storage, completely healthy. This elixir storage, he is going to get down. He needs to start a barbarian over here as soon as possible because he does not have time to play around. He starts a barbarian on the Tesla. That that does nothing. I don't. He's not going to be able to take down any of those with that, and that is going to be starting off this team. He just quits it. A 75% two-star from a top player. This was honestly unexpected here. I was not expecting that to be the result there. I, there was a big battlecopter bait. He dodged the battlecopter bait. And you just, you do not really think that was going to be happening there. I mean, I thought that once he dodged all those bombs, he would be fine. But it was just, he could not get to the back end in time. He could not make it in time. And that's going to put the next team all the way in the lead there. I mean, there's not really much you can do at that point. Um, they just have to really hope there's a good fail. And it looks like we're immediately going into the next match. There was no time to delay here. We have Galaxy now up against Peter. And this base, this base, I hate this base. There is a good crack to it, though. I don't know if he knows it. Let's go see what Galaxy does. They need a fail here. If, if, this, if Children of Auto fail here, that's the only way Hypnotized Minds really have a shot at winning this. So... We do see the scores right now. 140% is their combined destruction. We have two attacks and four stars, and that is not what you want to see. So, we'll have. I mean, this is very surprising. Usually, you you don't really expect to see six stars. I, I do think the nerves are kind of getting to them. This is one of the first big builder-based tournaments there have ever been. I know Itsu held one, and I I held one, and Carrie held one, but all of those were kind of small compared to this. This is broadcast on the mainstream there's actual big coverage of this i mean i know it's who again did his but they usually six star all the time i mean we'll have to see this is this is definitely going to be big so there's a big momentum shift right now over here for galaxy i mean his team is already in the lead by so much and look at this he's going to be using archers those archers are going to take out the air bombs and the lowered archer tower and that is an interesting decision here i mean that's going to clear out the entire back end and that, that's a really good plan. Now, I don't know, again, all these players, they know who they're going to go up against before they're up against them. And that is because they're going to have to be able to bait the players. So all these players are trying to predict what the other player is going to go with and trap the base for them. So it's, it's definitely going to be, look, we do find a Tesla already. That's going to kind of hurt the Battlecopter. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, though, because now he's going to fly over here, probably another Tesla. He's going to take down that Tesla, and that bait was not what he should have. That was really not what he was looking for. I mean, he, he just took down two Teslas already. That is huge value to get. And now he needs to finish off the base. We have two archers coming in to finish off the air bombs. And now with four baby dragons left alive here, I mean, this is going to be a pretty... A pretty uh, I would say easy clean. He needs to start one baby dragon from the back over here. Now the battlecopter ability did get triggered a little early. So that is going to maybe make him lose the battlecopter. I do think he still gets the six star though. So we're going to have to, I mean, sorry, the three star. I mean, it looks like it might be a six star too. It looks like he's going to even swag a bat. There we go. Three baby dragons alive going into the next stage. This is definitely not going to be a fail. And this is definitely going to put them in a really good position. Now all he has to do here is take out the two firecrackers and it's over. I mean... He's probably going to bring in cannon carts, I would assume, on the second stage because if they take out these firecrackers over here, it's pretty good. Uh, I do think there's a Tesla. They're probably going to be counting defenses. Let's go see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's going to be a Tesla here, and it's probably going to be right here. That is where there usually is a Tesla. So Galaxy, he probably knows this. He does a lot of top leader we're pushing to. He's in a call here. He has to know there's going to be a Tesla there. So how is he going to pull this one off? I mean... Well, we'll have to I see Galaxy's clan is actually in in the chat here. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's trying to show show off for your clan here. We'll go. He does bring in the cannon carts. So again, this is the best place to put your cannon carts. And he does have an archer and that archer could test for the Tesla. That is what would be the smartest thing to do here. Is that what he's going to do? Here comes the cannon cart. He leaves it in mortar mode, showing that he knows there's probably going to be a Tesla. 
Let's see the archer coming in. I would, yep, there it is. Now he does still find the, the Tesla. That's fine. He sacrifices a low health baby dragon to take that out. He already found all the bombs. So now we can start in another cannon cart. He does it from this corner. That's going to make him be able to get three firecrackers total. And this is a really smart move over here, making sure he's not going to get too tripped up by these uh, traps. And that, like I said, using that test, uh, archer to test for the Tesla and get all the bombs out of the way, that is a perfect use of an extra troop. If he did not use that there, that cannon cart would have been dead. And that would have been really, really bad. So the reason he's going from this angle, I just realized, is because he does not have his battle copter. So he needs to take down both the crushers if he wants his battle machine to get through the base. Now, here's the thing, though, is he does not have the baby dragon abilities on any of the baby dragons now look you see the perfect uh, cannon cart usage they're all out of range of the cannon cart uh, cannons i mean barely so now he's just sending in the battle machine he needs to send in a baby dragon on that cannon as soon as possible i'm assuming he's going to do that here in a second once he takes down this elixir storage now can the battle machine charge up to the ability oh look it's going through a wall that's not the end of the world if he can just keep the battle machine alive till it gets to the third ability there we go now it's going from the other side he uses the ability immediately there are no corner buildings so it's all going to be about how does he get through this back end look cannon card immediately following the battle machine into the base now he's going to take down the auto outpost this is not out of it yet though because this auto outpost is a big dangerous defense i mean you it may look innocent but this auto outpost will absolutely destroy an attack here so does he have the time he the, everything is kind of low hp and it looks like he's going to be able to pull this off no traps no bombs no anything this is looking like we're going to see i think the second uh, six star in the tournament i believe i mean it took way too long to get to this one but now we finally have yet another six star and galaxy did so so good here i mean that is exactly what you were hoping to see there and yeah i mean that that was a perfect hit i mean as we see this is gonna put a huge lead there i don't i don't think it's even possible to really come back unless scion does an absolutely terrible attack it is over but we still have lucky cajun now lucky cajun is one of the former top players uh, he, again best finish number three in the world and we have him getting ready to go in up against scion now so we're going to be getting into that just in a second here and it looks like he's actually just gone in now so why don't we go ahead transfer over there so we don't miss anything and here we are this is an interesting base to be using here i i built this base and it's an anti-dropship base and we see lucky cajun you see what he has selected drop ships now there there are some um I'm so surprised that I'm seeing so many of the bases I built being used here. But um, we'll have to go ahead and we'll just see where that ends up. So let's go ahead and let's go um, see how he's going to approach this. I mean, we do know he's the number three player in the world. So you just have to kind of go for it. Um, so technical difficulties, but we, okay, look at this. Oh no, this is bad. This is really bad. He is switching up to P.E.K.K.A.s and he knows what's going on. He sees the base's anti-cannon cart and he's, he's, he's going in for it. Sorry, I had a cough. And you see, he's definitely going to be going in for this base. It is weak against P.E.K.K.A.s. Hopefully, I don't even know if they built a second stage here. So let's see. Look, he finds his first Tesla all the way over there. Ooh, this is interesting. This is interesting. He found a ground bomb. Did Scion predict he would use... Uh, Pekka's here and switch up the base that is insane he switched up the base to make it anti Pekka's I mean I don't know why else there would be ground bombs here that or it was an accident so is it going to be enough here is this little trick going to work I mean he's going to be taking down this oh wow he is getting absolutely destroyed here he is taking so much damage here it looks like he's going to lose all the Pekka's and this was a huge, huge plan here. This was a huge, huge plan. Look, he, the bomber is just out, out of the country at this point. I mean, he just got knocked away. Now, the thing is, though, I don't think it's over. Because I do think that he's going to be able to pull it off here with the battle machine back end, right? I mean, battle machine is going to take a lot of damage, but it's charging up to its next ability. But wow, they he got, he got baited. I mean, this base, I thought it was going to be very anti-minion uh, dropship. But it looks like he predicted Lucky Cajun would try and be sneaky here and switch up from his usual strategy. And now he is definitely paying the price for it. So, the, I, I, you know what? This might be a fail. This might be a fail. This is, this is going to be a 97% fail for this team. This was a really rough, rough attack. I mean, he definitely got baited there. But now it is impossible. Uh, Otto's children or children of Otto will be winning this match here. And I mean, this is this is super, super 
like impressive. I mean, obviously this team is super stacked, but a player with a previous number one finish, and then a player who has a previous number six finish, and then Beaker, who as well is, I mean, this whole team, they've been going shot for shot, doing way better than the other team has been. So, I mean, it, it was kind of unexpected, I'll admit. I mean, we know Sir Moose has a former number 70 finish in the builder base, but even still, he's doing quite well. So why don't we go ahead, and we do see that goaded, oh, not goaded, sorry. We do see that Hypnotized Mind still, they have Lucky Cajun. Lucky Cajun is still a pretty solid player when it comes to defending. So, I mean, it's not necessarily, uh, again, they're not out of the tournament. They are not knocked out at all. They still have quite a lot that they can do because this is a double elimination tournament so they're knocked out of this day they're going to be back tomorrow i mean this is not over yet it is just a learning moment they gotta the nerves are getting to them they just need to take a breath and think well you know the worst that could happen already happened so let's go and now just make this a little bit of a comeback we see lucky cage is about to post and we're about to go into the last attack of this match here and i mean we got some pretty, pretty solid hits already, and it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not we're going to get Scion to finish out this match with what I would say would be a perfect, perfect play by everyone. So, I mean, we saw that um, Beaker, he did better than Sir Moose, and I'm going to be honest, even if it's a rough attack, getting better than the other creator, that's your only goal as a creator, because you are a tiebreaker. So, it would be a beautiful match here if we could see that, um, if we could see that uh, Scion is going to get another six star and that's going to put his team at I would say a perfect match I mean currently they are at I believe eight stars and they will be at 14 stars if they get done with this and we look at this Scion is bringing in a weird strategy dude okay this looks like it might be risky they they they're they already made it like they cannot possibly lose anymore so it's going to be um going to be a very interesting to see if he's going to pull this off. He might look at him and go, he's using Noah's Ark. He knows he's won. He doesn't want to reveal his strategy. So he's going to be using one of each troop here just to kind of swag for the content, I guess. I mean, I can't be upset. It'll make a good video. So how is he going to pull this off? How is he going to do it? Let's go ahead and see. We see Scion is going to be using uh, the cannon card to take down the double cannon. Battlecopter is going to come in over here, charge up his max stability. He used an archer to test for a trap, and we, we already know this one is going to be an interesting attack. He doesn't care whether he wins or loses. I mean, clearly, using such a risky strategy here, it's going to be, it's going to be a little, little interesting. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to see how he pulls this one off. What is the plan here? I mean, we do see the ground expo is definitely going to shake things up now. He can barely outrange this air bombs, but I don't know if he's going to be able to. So look, he's going to go for the laboratory first. And you know what? Because there's that uh, ground expo, that means the battle copter is just going to fly through here and get so much value. I mean, if he can take down this air bomb with the... Uh, with the battle copter or with the cannon cart it's pretty much done what he might do also is drop a drop ship right here that would damage up everything and look look at this he's on he's inside the range of the lava launcher but he is not in range that is i mean he's probably close to the expo look he is dodging not only the expo radius but the lava launcher radius barely being inside of both of them and he's still he's just living on the edge here so now we have all the rest of the troops coming in here and it was a meme attack he's using noah's arc but he's actually gonna he's gonna do better than many other players we've seen in the tournament today he's gonna have a cannon cart surviving he's gonna have a baby dragon surviving he might even have uh, the minions left alive here he does and he's going to the second stage here with Noah's Ark. I mean, that that cannon cart dodging both the ground expo and the lava launcher, that is a maneuver a lot of people would be too scared to do. I mean, obviously, Scion already knows he's won this tournament. He doesn't need to do anything too crazy here. And he's just going all out. So can he do another Noah's Ark to finish off the second stage? Um, I don't know what rules he's going by. I don't know if he's going to use uh, two of one troop in the second stage or not. But I mean, I don't think he really needs to do much more. He already proved he can absolutely destroy a base here with just a random strategy. I mean, we saw him start with like a real strategy. And then I think he realized like, wait a second, I don't need to do good. I can have fun. And that's exactly what he's going to be doing. So let's go see. Let's go see. Um, how is he going to pull this off? Let's, let's see, let's see. He has the Barbarians and the P.E.K.K.A. now. And is he going to use Battlecopter or Battle Machine? I mean, Battlecopter, that might be the better decision here. I don't, I don't know which one's going to be, work better here. I mean, if he's going to go for, like, um, 
these firecrackers with the cannon cart, then I would definitely use Battlecopter because there's only four firecrackers here. I mean, if you can take down this whole compartment with one cannon cart, this base is pretty much destroyed. So, yep, that looks like what he's going for. He's starting in the Barbarians all the way over here. And now, look, he's that is a really good placement of a cannon cart. Yet again, I mean, Scion is really, really going all out with cannon carts today. We see him. He immediately puts down the cannon cart. He doesn't even move it. He just immediately puts it down perfectly out of range of the cannon, um, cannon right here. And this is a really, really interesting attack. So, oh no, though, but the battle copter, it got locked on too by the barbarian. So the battle copter just went the complete wrong direction, and that's going to be a dead battle copter. So... His only goal here now is to get a 5-star. That's all that matters because um, a 6-star is not possible. Look at this. Look at what he's doing. He's on the edge of the double cannon. He is, he's going in range of everything, man. Like, he, I don't know what, what he's, he's... He's just... I mean, I love cannon cards. I use cannon cards a lot. I do some risky things with cannon cards, but I've never done this many risky things in one attack. This is the riskiest attack I think he could have possibly done. And he is still, I think, going to get a 5-star, which that that is going to be an amazing attack. I mean, think of this. Beaker's Lab matches head-to-head -head with his creator, and he wins that. And then Ollie gets a 6-star. And then they get two fails on defense. Oh, that push trap hurts. And then now Scion, to finish off the match, is going to get a 5-star using a complete Noah's Ark. Even after he lost a cannon car, even after his battle copter got like completely demolished, he still gets that. And that was a super cool attack here. And it may have not been the six star, but I mean, guys, a five star with such a meme strategy, that is really all that, that matters there. I mean, I don't think he's going to be asking for too much more. That was a, a little, a little, little skillful attack. Yeah, I mean, I, I would not have been really expecting that one. That, that was, that was such a risky approach i mean not only did he outrange the ground expo and the lava launcher and the cannon and the double cannon he he just he went all out for it so um, i mean we should go ahead and we're gonna go try and see if we can get to the statistics there and go kind of look through why did their attacks not work so just give us one moment and we're gonna go look at the overview of the teams here right on hypnotized minds we had Lucky Cajun, who unfortunately, Lucky Cajun got a 97% two-star. Then we saw Sir Moose, who got a 70, uh, nope, sorry, a 65% two-star. And Peter, who got a 75% two-star. So the whole team did two-stars. Uh, it was definitely not the approach they were looking for. And then on uh, Children of Auto, we saw Galaxy Zero got a 200% six-star. We saw that... Uh, what would Beaker get? Beaker got what, a 72% two-star, and then we just saw Scion get the five-star here. And why don't we go ahead? Why don't we go ahead and look at this replay here of the attack? Because we're going to see like what went wrong. Why did these not work? I mean, we're going to go first into uh, Lucky Cajuns here because we're going to wait for the next match. The wait next match should be starting somewhat soon, but we're going to go check out Lucky Cajun. And I mean, he got completely baited. This base was built to be anti um, anti minions, and instead. Um, he went with uh, Pekka's, which is a good plan. This is what you should be doing. But look, the bombs just on the inside completely are going to destroy this. I mean, the battle machine as well. The Pekka's is not going to go with the battle machine. But even still, it's surprising this one failed. He just, he did not open the other side of this. Like, look, the bomber is hitting the giant cannon, but it is not opening this wall at all. So that's going to make this just absolutely go terribly. Then look at this push trap he's about to hit with his bomber. One... And then ready, two, all the way out of the map, it's gone. And that's just going to make it so it does not get into the action. It does not open more walls. He tries to use the P.E.K.K.A. ability there, but it just does not work. And with that, we just had the battle machine walking around. It doesn't much matter because this is just such a high DPS point here that he just absolutely got crushed. It was a really solid attack there. But I think more interesting, why don't we go look at Peter's? Why didn't Peter's work? I mean, again, he was up against a pretty difficult base, I believe, but it still just did not quite get what he was hoping for in terms of value. I mean, it, 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 it was a rough attack. I mean, why don't we go ahead and look at it? So here we're into Peter's attack now. So we're going to go take a look here. We see that there was a, just, he ran into some issues here. He, um, what he should have done here is look, he split up his cannon carts. 
Not a good idea. You should have put both cannon carts right here, and then what that would have done is it would have taken out this Archer Tower, the Roaster, Air Bombs, and Mega Tesla. Those are the biggest defenses down already. And then look, he found this huge bait up top. We already saw that. That was really unfortunate, but luckily it didn't catch his Battlecopter. So now he's just going to let his cannon cart move in, take down the Roaster, and then something interesting he does is I think he was expecting to get down this Lava Launcher. But look, I, he either used the ability too early... I think that's what he did. Yeah, look, he used the ability a little bit too early there. So the ability did not take down the Lava Launcher, which means now this cannon cart is going to die because it can't do anything about it. I mean, what he has to do now is kind of scramble like, oh no, I got to make sure to use the Battlecopter ability onto this uh, Lava Launcher and make sure to damage it up and get it down. But in turn, doing that puts him in range of a lowered Archer Tower, so his Battlecopter dies. And he's just losing some good cleanup that he could have had for the back end. And then at this point, the only other mistake he really made here is he put the Barbarian onto three Teslas, which, you know, they got completely electrocuted here. Uh, really unfortunate. I mean, luckily, again, this tournament, it is double elimination, so no one is knocked out of it yet. And we're going to be coming in from the next match here. And let's go see who we got up next. Up next, we got another cool team here. We have Team Judo. Team Judo is built up of Natramia, one of the top German players with 13 in the world as his best finish. Henry, another top German player who is currently number 35 in the world. And then lastly, Judo Sloth. Everyone knows Judo Sloth. I don't know if he needs an introduction. He is currently at 4,800 trophies in the world. We know he's one of the most skilled players who is going to be in here. I mean, he has so much experience in this scene here. That I mean, I would have to expect that he's going to be doing quite well. This match is going to be coming up somewhat soon. Let's go ahead and see when it starts. I mean, we have a little bit of time there. We might go see if we'll, we'll get into it a little earlier than usual. But let, who was their opponents? Their opponents are going to be the Architects. The Architects, of course, have been around since Builder Base 1.0. We got Psychopath, one of the best base builders in the world. He has been building bases. All the bases you see get stolen, they were usually his base. He is one of the top base builders. And he is absolutely insane. So we see that he has a best finish of number 11 in the world. And now we have Blib Blob, also known as Hallow. And he has a previous finish of number 1 in the world. And I thought C6 Shrimp was the only player in this tournament with multiple number 1 finishes. I was wrong. Blib Blob here has two number 1 finishes in the entire world here. And so this is going to be a really interesting match. But not only do they have that, they have none other than... Carbon Finn on their team, also everyone knows, a strategic genius here who has been doing a little bit of practicing behind the scenes here with these teams. So we're definitely going to be interested. How is Carbon Finn going to fare against uh, the other creator? I mean, I would say this is going to be one of the most interesting matches here because we have Judo Sloth. Judo Sloth and Carbon Finn, I would say, are incredibly similar people. I mean, as far as like the content they make, they overview strategy or they, they used to kind of overview all these strategies. I would say... They are going to be like the most evenly matched. I mean, we saw we saw Beaker and Sir Moose were very evenly matched here. But over on the Architects, this is yet another really even match here. I mean, obviously, this team here is looking like they have the advantage with having a top 11 player and a top 1 player along with Carbon Finn. But you can't count this team out. I mean, Natramia, he is currently still pushing in the world. Henry is still pushing in the world now. I will admit... Henry was a little bit of an addition at last minute. Luckily, he is still a really, really solid player. I mean, I'm, you know, we did lose a player before, so we had to kind of add him in like last minute. But even still with that, he is up in the top 50 right now. He is, I think, even nearly having more trophies than Jopo, who finished number six in the world. So he is no joke here. He is at 6,000 trophies. And then Tramia currently is as well at a pretty good amount of trophies. We see him up at the very top in addition to um, uh, Henry, he is not only at 6,000 trophies, he is at 6,300 trophies, putting him at number 10 in the world. So this team, even though they have worse top finishes, they cannot be counted out yet because they are currently doing super well here. I mean, if we go all the way into the very world uh, leaderboards here, we're going to go take a look here, and we got Natramia all the way at number 10 here. I mean, it's going to be a interesting match. I'm really really excited like how how this is going to work out i mean we know carbon finn is really good we know judo is really good so it might be it might be close now the thing here is 
this isn't home village like these players even though they are really really solid on the home village we're not on the home village anymore we're in the builder base so it, it is a mystery as to who is going to be able to pull this one off like it's, it's going to really depend on who did more training i know judo sloth he didn't do as much training as carbon finn did so is judo sloth just going to have that natural intellect there and be able to still pull this one off or is carbon finn going to take the w here in this first round and just because he did more training than judo sloth did i mean Again, this, all the teams we've seen here today have been incredibly even matched. I mean, we saw probably the two powerhouse teams here. Um, let's go ahead and find that one. Sorry, we're doing a lot of transitions. The post powerhouse team here was going to be Midnight Bash with the C6 Shrimp number one finisher and versus uh, Goaded here. Wow, there's a lot of transitions. I keep pressing the wrong button. Who had the number two finish here. And then the next match, which we just saw, which was Hypnotized Minds. I would say these are also really evenly matched. I mean, Beaker and uh, Sir Moose clearly did very similar attacks here. And then we saw also Lucky Cajun and Peter. They are both in the top leaderboards. We got Sion, who is as well in the top leaderboards. I mean, all these teams are really matched here. And while we're waiting for this match to start, why don't I go ahead and let you guys know what the next and last uh, uh, match will be. We are not getting to this match yet, but we're just going to go take a little overview of it because some people are asking. So... That's right, Team Itsu. Team Itsu is built up of some of the strongest German players right now. Right now, they have Daniel05, the former number one player in the world. And not just the former number one player in the world, guys. I mean, if we're going to go look at the builder base leaderboards right now, we're going to see Daniel is actually the number one player right now. I mean, he is definitely killing it over here. But we have Daniel05, and then Gobos. Gobos is another top 10 player here. But not just that, we also have Itsu, and Itsu, yes, he is at 5,000 trophies, but he is the only player here who has a former number one finish in the Builder Base. I mean, I had to make a little bit of a concept photo for this, because I was making all their brackets and everything. And uh, I'll show you the one I made for Itsu before I had to change it when I realized, like, no, that looks way too, this looks way too unbalanced. Let me go show you this real quick. I mean, this was the initial thing we have. We have Daniel over here, number one. Itsu, number one. Gobos, number nine. I mean, this team is a complete powerhouse here with Itsu. I mean, we Itsu has not played Builder Base in a little bit here, but it is still going to be incredibly difficult um, for the opposing team to play it off, but the opposing team, we also have Team Balalaika. Um, this is this is an interesting team. We got FJB. We he has the uh, previous 13 finish in the world. We also got Max Killer, one of the top Russian players with a former number nine finish in the world. And we got Jacobs Clash. I know what you might be thinking. Who is Jacobs Clash? I'll be honest. He is a addition here, but he he is up for it. I mean, he was a last minute addition here. We ran out of a creator, so I I messaged him last night. He said he was up for it. We did a lot of training, and we were in for it. So Jacob's Clash here. He actually pushed all the way from 4,500 trophies last night to 5,027 trophies. He got a lot of training, and I think he is still training right now as we speak. So this one is a big mystery. Who is Jacob's Clash? Is he going to be able to do this? I mean, this is a very small creator here, but we are putting him in into this match because we didn't really have any options. So we just got to go with what we got. Um, so why don't we go ahead and just go take another look here. I mean, Max Killer, top player in the Russian Builder base. We also have FJB here, one of the top players in the United States. Jacobs Clash, a small creator. I, I don't know how many of you guys have heard of him, but I mean, he is consistently uploading daily. His channel's in the description if you care to look at it. And he was up for the task here. He did so many attacks last night with us. I mean, we, we didn't really have an option. I, I a creator at the very last minute of the tournament. I mean, two days before this tournament started, he messaged me and told me he could not make it, which is a little short notice. So I messaged Jacob less than like 10 hours ago. I said, hey, how busy are you tomorrow? He got in a call with me. We did some training. I trained him. After he has trained him, Max Killers trained him. We got a lot of training in. So that's going to be an interesting match to see. But that is going to be at the very, very end of this, though. Right now, we just have two more matches. And the next match that is going to be coming up will be Team Judo versus Team uh, The Architect. So, I mean, this should be happening in any minute now. I mean, we're, we're getting into the very end parts of this tournament. We only have a couple matches left here. And it's, it's all up to this. I mean, these teams, they are very evenly matched. I mean, they have some of the cooler fo uh, logos here. We see that uh, the Architects have their own custom logo. We also see that Judas Sloth has his own logo just for the whole team. Same as Itsu. It's going to be very, very interesting. 
Uh, I'm very interested to see how this match will go. I mean, I, I don't know who you guys think. Do you think Carbon Finn is going to take this one out, or do you think Judo Sloth is going to come from behind here? I mean, I don't know how long these guys have been training for. I, I imagine they've got a little bit of training in this. So we're just going to have to see who is going to get it going. We have Beaker's Lab. They're all still in a call. It looks like... Um, Everyone's still in their groups. They're all messaging. Everyone's kind of getting confident. It's it's coming down to the final minutes here. I know Carbon Finn said he would be streaming this as well, so I'm going to be very interested to see how this goes. And yeah, so uh, I'm again. This this was these are the two bigger creators in this tournament. I was very glad I could get Judo Sloth uh, to actually participate in this because it was a somewhat last minute uh thing uh for him too i know that he is very busy i mean obviously biggest clash creator i believe he's kind of busy rick rolling the entire staff team of supercell so i mean uh, he's very very busy guy but he was still able to participate in this he's just coming here just to help uh give us some more publicity to the tournament so i'm, I'm really 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 glad we could get him in this so this uh, tournament is going to be starting very, very soon, this next match. And it's going to be starting off this t tournament uh, match. We are going to have, I believe, Henry going up against Psychopath. Psychopath, again, as I told you, one of the best base builders in the world here. I mean, he has uh, built most of the bases that anybody steals within the builder base. These bases were built by Psychopath. He just takes all of them uh, and he just makes them so easily. So we're just going to go ahead and make sure we got everyone getting ready to come on. We're going to message Psychopath, let him know it's the only time to get on. And then it's going to be time. I mean, I'm very interested to see how Carbon Finn does here. Um, so it's, it's going to be a little close. I mean, I see a lot of people here saying that they think Daniel's going to win the whole thing. Daniel's team are very is very solid. I mean, it's we know is a powerhouse here. But, I mean, you're also saying you do think um, Auto, Children of Auto might do it. And you can't count them out here. I mean, we do see that Ch Children of Auto have a very solid team put together here and if beaker starts learning how to <laughs> attack so I, I keep pressing the wrong transitions i swear uh, it'll be very interesting so if if itsu comes out in the very first match here and gets an immediate six star that's going to be a very very big thing here so we're hoping we can get um everyone online here now in the past, since we had a creator who was a little bit late, he did not, uh, we did wait for him, but if players are a little late to the tournament going from now on, they will be counted as an automatic zero star, which is a big thing. Hopefully players will not be late. I'm just going to uh, believe we announced that a little bit, but so we will be trying to not make any, there be any too big of a delay. We're just going to go message Psychopath, the next player who's coming up soon, so we can get him in there. I mean, there were so many, there were, again... We've seen a lot of two stars today, which is very surprising. This is a big match for everyone. So, um, I, I would, honestly, most people are very nervous here. I mean, this this is not an easy match. Like these, the pressure here from being streamed in the builder base. Like, obviously, I'm not going to say I'm like a massive streamer, but you're still they're being streamed live. You got to not make mistakes. You got to worry about everything. So, there's a lot of uh, pressure that is on these players here not to mess up. So. I mean, we're just gonna we're gonna have to hope that this is still gonna work out going on forward. I mean, I feel like any player that failed already, they've already done the worst they could possibly do, and I feel like that's gonna help with the nerves. Like they're gonna think, you know what? I already failed. I got that over with. I ripped off the bandaid. How could it get worse? And so, it's it's. I feel like that's gonna be a, a bit of the mentality here. So we're just gonna see if we can get psychopath on. If not, we're just gonna have a different side of them go first. Let's go see where he is. All right. All right. I mean, I don't know. I personally, I'm going to say I have the Architects for this one. Architects, definitely the team that I know the most. I mean, I was in their clan for a good bit during Bitterbase 2.0. And I, I will say, though, if Psychopath does not get on, that's going to be an issue. Let's just, I'm just checking my, my friends list here to see if he's on or not. Unfortunately, he's not here yet. So if he if he's late, we're gonna put a a different player in for him to begin with, and then if he doesn't come by the end of the match, it'll be an automatic zero star. So we're just gonna go ahead. All right, we're gonna have Hallo Bliblab. I mean, he's gonna be going up against. Um, he's gonna be posting his face base first. Let's go get this ready. So it's gonna be Bliblab. I believe is gonna be going up against. Let's go see what the match is here. Another player, he's going to be going up against Natramia, I think, right? 
Yeah. Okay. So, um, here we go. Let's just go get that Natramia online because Natramia will now be going first. We were going to have Henry and Psychopath start this off here, but because he's not showing up, we're going to give him some time. But if he doesn't show up, that is unfortunately going to be a zero star. So for the person asking how much time for the next attack, uh, any minute now. Um, we're just, okay, that's, that's unfortunate. So we're just going to go ahead and get this ready. And we're going to make sure everyone's coming in. So let's just go look at the overview real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and message these people. And now it is time to get into it. We have the first player. He's posted the friendly challenge. It is almost time for them to start. And there's still no sight of their, their teammate. So um, it'll be interesting to see whether or not he shows up. If he doesn't show up, that's going to be just an automatic fail, which is going to be really unfortunate. But let's go ahead and get into the first attack of this match here. Natramia versus Halo or Blibblob. And his army is all archers. I hope for his sake that's not going to be the case. But I mean, you know, we'll, we'll have to go see how this works out. And it'll be very interesting. So we have Natramia coming in. And all he's going to do is hopefully not use mass archers. I'm sorry. If this if this is your strategy, I don't mean to psych you out a little bit more. But, oh, oh, he's bringing in hog gliders. Is that a mistake? Or is he actually going to go for this? I mean, look at the, this base is very interesting. Wow. Okay. Okay. He's going drop ships and hog gliders. There's a lot of people who spam my um my comments here saying when are you gonna use drop ships and hog gliders? And I say never, because I don't want to lose. But Natramia, he has six star me with this before. I just I don't know how this is gonna go. He's really risking it all in the first round of the tournament. Uh Judo, I hope you're not getting a little nervous here. Luckily again, double elimination. It's not the end of the world, but Natramia is using probably the riskiest strategy we've seen today. I mean, we saw Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark is risky, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, it's it's not going to be, a, I mean, it's, it's not going to really be a guaranteed six-star, like, Noah's Ark, you can actually kind of plan around it, hog gliders, you hit Teslas, you hit crushers, you hit traps, and it looks like Natramia is hitting bad Wi-Fi here, oh no, okay, he's back, he's back, okay, oh, got me concerned, so, he got a little delayed there. But you hit anything, and you are in a bad place. So he is in range of the air expo just barely. That's going to be a little bit complicated for him to overcome. It's not the end of the world, of course. Like, he still has time. But that's definitely not really what he wanted to see. Um, but the dropships are still going to come in here, and hopefully it's not going to be the end of the world. Here come the dropships. Double dropship ability. I don't know if that hits the Mega Tesla like he wants it to, though. Yeah, it doesn't. That does not hit the Mega Tesla. He needed to start them in from the very top here so we could get that. But now instead, he's just starting everything. Okay, this is what I told you. This is why it's a risky strategy. Look how many Teslas just popped up here. Does he still get this? This double cannon never got stunned. That's going to be a big issue. But look, these skeletons are coming in and tanking for everything. So let's go see. The biggest risk for this. Okay, this is really good for him. All these skeletons are now going to tank for this double cannon. You know, Natramia, this is one of the riskiest attacks we've seen today. But because of these skeletons, he's actually going to be able to pull this one off. And now the question is, does he have enough time? These skeletons are going around to the back end. He might get a little lucky here with these skeletons. Now, hogs are pretty quick on cleanup. We just saw one got blasted by a bomb over there. Luckily, that's not necessarily the end of the world, but um, we're going to have to see. There's 30 seconds left. I think he gets us down in time. Okay, look, look at this hog going for the corner. That is perfect. That is exactly what you want to see. So now we have Natramia looking really good here, again, with a really unique and really risky strategy. Use the Battlecopter ability to get to the corner in time. He's going to be fine. And that is a first three-star to start this off. Thankfully, not a two-star to start the match. This is, I think, one of the first matches that we haven't seen a two-star yet. Okay, let's go see. Let's go see. Um, how does this work? How is he going to get down this next stage? I mean, with three hog gliders left, it's not going to be easy. He may need to use cannon carts here. I mean, look, this is a very creative attack. I got to give him that. And I'm, I'm very proud of him for getting through the first stage. Even if he gets a five-star here, that is a good, good, um, good start. You know, like a five-star attack here is going to be set. But, I mean, we're just not sure how it's going to work. We'll have to go see how it works out. Um, we have him just sticking with archers right now. That's a very interesting decision here. I'm not quite sure how 
how well this will go. Now he goes to Cannon Curse, so I'm guessing he's going to use the Cannon Curse to go test for any traps. I mean, sorry. No, he's going to use the Hog Glider to test for traps. Ideally, Cannon Curse are going to stay alive here, and this might work. So, let's give it a second. Let's give it a second. Um, where is he going to start from? He, I would say start from this corner. Again, Hallow is a base builder himself. Ooh, he's finding some bombs. He's finding bombs. He, he might hit a push trap. He needs to put down a Hog here. It looks like that's exactly what he's going to do, I would assume. He really needs to test here because it's probably going to be a push trap right there. I mean, this will just be, uh, this will be way just, uh, no, he's hitting bombs. Is there a Tesla there? Okay, he needs to put cannon cards. They go into cannon mode. They should take out the guard post. Now, this is smart. He's using the battle copter. Oh, there's the push trap. I told you there was going to be a push trap, and it was exactly where we thought it was. Natramia. I don't know if he's going to be able to pull off. Oh, no. Are you going to three-star? Oh, no. <laughs> No, I think we might start... The, okay, it isn't a two-star. It isn't a two-star. You know, it's not the worst thing we've seen. So, I mean, he definitely used a risky strategy, but that is a little bit of a rough attack to start this one out. I mean, it was it was impressive, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, definitely a little rough. So, now, up up now, we're going to have... Hallow is now going to go against Entramia. And we'll see how that goes. All right, now he's, he's posting it immediately, and then we're going to get Psychopath to post as well. Uh, I think, well, Psychopath will be up at the very end now. And here we go. We're into the next attack here. And Natramia is going to be up against Bliblob. He might do it for the meme. I mean, it would definitely make this a little this match a little easier. But uh, I was definitely surprised to see him pull out that one moment. Okay, sorry that we had a little bit of technical difficulties for a second. We just lost Wi-Fi for just a brief moment. So that, that, was, that was a little bit unfortunate. Let me go ahead and reload the app here, and we're just going to go into the attack. Hopefully we didn't miss too much here. It was quite unfortunate that we had to run into some internet connectivity issues. And here we are. It, okay, I don't think we lost anything. I think we didn't miss any of the attack. And now it looks like it's his Wi-Fi who's having an issue. Thankfully, that, um, all right, I mean, at least it's not my Wi-Fi. I mean, we're, clearly, if you're seeing my stream, my Wi-Fi is not the issue at this point. There we go. Okay, we're back. We're back. This is perfect. We lost connection, and even still, we're all the way back, and we didn't miss a thing. So, uh, this is this is probably best case scenario. Why don't we go ahead? We're going to get back into here, and hopefully, he didn't lose connection. Let me go see if that's what he's talking about in chat, because we haven't seen him do anything in a little bit. Let's go see. Let me go see if he... He may have lost connection here. This may have been a Wi-Fi outage for both of us. Uh, if he doesn't start here, we're going to have to just, we're going to give him another shot because he may have lost connection. Let's go see. Um, is he is he here or is he not here? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if he's here. <laughs> okay, I think, he, I think he lost connection. So we're going to have to, we're just going to let him do another one just because, yeah, look, he lost connection. We're going to say redo, and we're going to get to that in a second. I mean, it's kind of weird that he lost connection exactly when I did. Now it makes me wonder, where is he in reference to me? Is he is he here somewhere? But, I mean, uh, since he's offline right now, we're going to go ahead and just have Psychopath go go now uh, just, to, just to make it a little different. Let's just have Henry post up, and we'll give Hallow a second. There we go. So, I mean, that, that was surprising. I can't believe that, that both of us lost Wi-Fi at the same second there. Um, let's just go ahead and give it a moment. So we're just going to have another player go and attack there. So we're going to have Henry post his base, then uh, we'll have him attack it. Yeah, yeah, Hello just confirmed. Uh, that he lost connection. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. It's okay. So we're going to either have him come back online and do his attack real quick. We're going to have someone uh, just do an attack in his place while he gets his connection sorted out. All right. Let me go. For There we go. All right. So, I mean, it's a little unfortunate and it's a little unexpected. Luckily, I uh, we planned ahead for extra time here because this will definitely take some time. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. I mean, 
Okay, I mean, while we're waiting for everybody, let's go see. Is Hallow back? He is back online. All right, we're just gonna we're just gonna let Hallow go back again. Ah, okay. We're just gonna Henry will be defending here, and hopefully Psychopath will be going for him. We just had to give him a moment to fix his connection, but luckily his teammate showed up. So we're gonna lose one teammate, but now the other one's here. So it's not the end of the world. So let's just go see if Psychopath will hop into this real quick. Definitely um, a a little bit of a a little mis mishap there. Someone's asking why I'm not participating in the tournament. Uh, I'm not participating in the tournament just because I'm casting the tournament. It would be a little awkward if I was also like attacking in it at the same time. So I'm just I'm just here to cast it. I put it together. That's all I'm doing. And now we're going to get into our next match here. Up with Psychopath. Psychopath is a great attacker, great base builder. We already know that. And we're going to go see him live right now. Let's go into it. So... We are still one attack to zero attacks. That attack from Hallow will not count. I don't really want to have a disconnect in war. And both teams agreed to have let him redo it. So we're going to let him redo it. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give him a moment. So how is he going to do this? I mean, this base is quite difficult. I, I think Henry built this base himself. So it is base builder versus base builder. This is not something you see often because most players in the builder base, I'll be honest, is steel bases. It's kind of unfortunate, but this is not really what you would have been expecting, but we do still see interesting approaches here. Look, Psychopath loves his cannon cars. So he loves his baby dragons, and that's what he's going with. We saw a similar approach here earlier, but what he's going to do is Battlecopter is just going to go ahead, take out the builder hall, and then from there on, we're going to have the baby dragons kind of sweep in, take everything out, and we'll go ahead and see how he finishes off the base, though. So I imagine he's just going to send in baby dragons here. Now, look, he finds a Tesla. That's going to take down a little bit of health here. That's not the end of the world. And he has a good distance from the uh, Air Expo, except he's about to go straight into the Air Expo. He's going to go into a really heavy fire line here, actually. He needs to put down a baby dragon now. He does perfect placement right there. He needs another one onto the Archer Tower. There it goes. One more onto the Air Bombs. He's probably going to do that. Yep, perfect, perfect. I mean, this is textbook how you want to use Baby Dragons, and he's doing it perfectly. And now he just needs to finish off the back end here. He has a Swag Baby Dragon right now. And there he goes. He puts it down a little, just a second ago. I was kind of a little delayed in saying that, but it's okay. And now, okay, okay. He's getting through the second stage. He has two Baby Dragons. He has two Cannon Carts. It's looking good for Team Architects here. So... We're going to have to see, how, how do they get to this next part here? How is he going to take down the next stage? I mean, he has so much left alive here. This was a really impressive showing of skill. We're going to have him go all the way to the corner, and now we're into the next stage. So I'm not quite sure what I'm expecting him to do here. I mean, it's going to be very interesting. Um, you can either bring in more cannon cards or more baby dragons. Typically, I would say it's best to bring in more cannon cards here. But this base is interesting in the way that um, there aren't a lot of easy firecrackers. Like, he can maybe get two right here, but... I don't, he might bring in all, yeah, he's doing three cannon carts instead of, uh, oh, okay, interesting, interesting, he's going to go for the guard post units. Uh, there are traps around here usually, but this is not in the end of the world still. He's going to be able to take down both the guard post units here with these cannon carts. He doesn't need to pause them or anything. They're just going to full steam ahead, blast through the guard post units. Now, he needs to make sure to pause them. He does. He, he gets a perfect pause there. So now he's going to, oh no, oh no, he had the perfect pause, but now he is in range of... Now he's in range of the cannon car here. That's not what he's looking for. That is really, really quite bad, actually. That's that's really, really... Sorry. That's, that's not what he was hoping to happen. I mean, he needs to... Oh, both the cannon carts die. That is That was not really expected. Wow. I mean, just... You can see, this is... A lot of people, they don't really realize how difficult the builder base is. They kind of think, like, oh, it's spam. You know, throw everything in there. It'll work. No. No, the builder base has actually gotten quite difficult here. I mean, you just see one mistake, your attack is over. There is no margin for error. And we've seen that in so many of these attacks here. I mean, we saw this one mistake where he let one cannon cart go too far forward, the attack's done. He couldn't get the cannon cart out of the way in time, and that was all it took. So, definitely hurt there. I mean, again, Psychopath, he is still going to get a pretty solid 5-star here. And then hopefully his teammate is going to be able to clutch it up. I, I believe he should be getting his connection fixed quite soon. And so we're going to see him going for the Builder Hall. That's going to get him the five star. And now it's just about how much percent can he get. I mean, uh, I mean, it may not be over. I might have spoken too soon. Did I jinx it for? Did I jinx it for Team Judo? Uh, I don't think so. He only has 22 seconds left. Does he have the time here? He may have the time actually. I may have spoken too soon. Oh, look at this! Look at this! He is on the. 
but we're barely not in range here. But no, it's going to be a 197% time fail, it looks like. Maybe 193. And that was really, really close here. I mean, that was a beautiful recovery even after losing so many troops. And we do see the 193 five-star. I mean, that was a really solid attack, all things considered. I mean, he had so many issues that he ran into there. And he still was able to pull it off. So now, Hallow is going to be up against him. Uh, up against Psychopath. And let's go ahead and get him in there now. All right. We're about to get him into the next uh, attack here. So, uh, yeah, being a pro on Builder Base, recommend mini drops, man. Yeah, what are you going to do when drop ships get nerfed? Hopefully they get nerfed somewhat soon. I mean, they're absolutely broken right now, so I'm hoping they don't they don't take forever to get nerfed. Um, so now we have Henry up against Psychopath. Now, Henry has something to prove here. Henry was the last-minute addition to the team here, so he has to kind of, like, show himself here. I mean, again, he it is double elimination. If it fails, it fails, you know? Like, you still have another match here. But wow, it's, it's going to be a little difficult. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, he's, he is bringing in dropships and minions. You know, we haven't seen a single dropship minion attack yet today. And a lot of people dislike this strategy because it is quite easy. But at the same time, sometimes this is this is the tournament, man. You don't need to think about what are people going to think. You got to think about winning. And I think that's what he's thinking about here is... You know what, I could either use a strategy which has a higher chance of failing or use a strategy which is easy. What are you going to do in that situation? I mean, uh, I don't like dropship minions just because I do think they are a little lower skill. But at the same time, this is a tournament. Like, there, you don't need to show off. You need to win, and that's Henry's mindset here. So, this is not an easy base, though. This, this base, I've never seen this one before. This base was built by... Um, psychopath himself so it's going to be very interesting to see here how is he going to actually pull this one off i mean he starts in battle cops are all the way over here on the clock tower it's going to be very interesting i'm not quite sure how that's going to work out okay okay all right he's going on to the laboratory now so i'm assuming he's going to just full send the dropships and the minions over here it's just he's leaving a lot of danger on the back end here the roaster and the air bombs are two of the biggest biggest issues that you can have on the base here so i mean Let's go ahead and just kind of hope he's going to still be able to make this one work. I, I I feel like it's a very big risk to be putting these troops where he's putting them. So is he going to go instead from this side? No, no, no. Here comes the dropship. And okay, no, no, no. He's fine because look, he's going. Okay, he's fine. I think he's fine because look, he's going to go for the air bombs and the roaster immediately. Battlecopter ability gets in there. Now we can use the dropship abilities quite freely. Although... I'll be honest, his minions are kind of disappearing fast. He only has four minions that are going to be alive right now. He does not get that roaster down. He should... Oh, this is going to be a close one. This is going to be interesting. Now, again... Oh, okay, okay, wait. That dropship is now tanking for everything. And he has two minions still surviving. He needs to use a dropship ability as soon as possible. He does that right there. Now he's going to be able to take out Mega Tesla, And he does not lose any other minion. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, no, the bomb. <laughs> I mean, it was close. Um, let's go see. The Builder Hall is max health. I think he's out of range of the Tesla here. So he is getting to the second stage without a doubt. It is just how is he going to pull off the second stage now? It's going to be very, very interesting. Um, apparently, this is not a base built by Psychopath. I take no blame. I just assumed. But uh, anyway, we do have him taking down the Tesla, and now he's into the next attack. And it's going to be a little difficult. Now, again... We did have to replace a player, um, so Henry is coming in, he did not have a lot of time to practice, and even still, he was able to come in on less than a day's notice, so I'm really glad he's here, and he is a really solid player, I mean, he's number 35 in the world right now, so he should know how to pull this uh, off, at least to a 5-star, I mean, a 5-star is all you can ask for now, and hope that a creator does terribly for the other team, and that your creator just does crazy good, so... We're going to hope that this works well. I mean, it's going to be a little difficult. Um, yeah, I don't like dropships. <laughs> uh, but let's see. He's bringing in a dropship and a baby dragon. Never seen this one before. I've never seen a strategy where you do that on the second stage. So, I mean, i got to give it to you. You're using something unique. You're using something cool, and that is cool to me. I like that you're going to be doing that. I like that he's going to be, like, at least not going completely basic strategies. And now he's changing it up even more. Cannon carts. I love cannon carts. I can't say anything bad about cannon carts. So we saw where the traps were. There's a push trap right here, and there's bombs over here. So he needs to avoid that push trap spot, and I think he's going straight for it. I mean, hopefully not, hopefully not. Let's go see. Okay, he's pausing. 
He's pausing cannon cart a few times. I don't really know what why he's doing that. Oh, I was about to say that like I knew why, but I don't know why. Okay, now he's sending it. I guess he wants the cannon cart to be tanked for by the battle machine. Oh, okay, look, there's a Tesla. Ooh, that's in range of the, the, the Tesla too now. Okay, he should still take it down. He has one cannon cart just sitting still. And something Henry told me is he plays on phone. So he has a very hard time moving all the cannon carts because they're so close together on his phone. But look, all he's doing is, is he's securing the five star. He's securing the five star here, and that, that's good. That's all you can ask for. This is like in the home village when you're having a, a terrible attack and it's a one star. All you gotta do is at least secure a high two star, and that's exactly what we see Henry doing right now. You can say what you want about the strategy he used, but I'm glad, I'm glad we still get to see him doing a pretty, pretty good recovery here, and he should get all the way up to like a 165 five star, I would assume. I mean, again, say what you will about the strategy, say what you will about. Uh, how he played it. He's coming in on, he didn't have much practice and he is still going to be getting one of the best attacks that we've seen in the tournament today. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's go ahead. We are going to get to a 160, is it 165? I think it is 167. Okay, maybe even more. So we'll see if he's going to take down this cannon. I don't think he will. These zappies are going to absolutely demolish him and we're going to see that uh, happen right there. So, I mean, 167 five-star. That's still a pretty solid attack there. I was glad to see that. And we have BD Legend with a $10 donation. Thank you, BD Legend, man. I'm glad you could come in and see this. Also, thank you for the help. I, uh, I got the assistance needed. So we got, we got it all running somewhat smoothly. But thank you, for, um, uh, thank you for coming in, man. Thank you for the donation. I like you. Glad to see you in the chat. I was hoping I would see one of you guys here. So now we got up next, we're going to have... Um, I believe Bliblob versus Natramia. So we're going to let Natramia know um, that he is his turn to post. And then we're going to have Halo come in for the rematch here. We saw Halo run into a Wi-Fi issue. So we're hoping that is not the case this time because that, that was quite unfortunate. So we are in and we are live. It was a really quick turnaround here. And now we got, let's just take a look at the score here. We got Team Judo here. They've done two attacks. They have eight stars. That's an average of four stars for, per attack right now. Architects are averaging five stars. And Halo, even though he got a disconnect against his base, he did show that he actually got through the first stage here. So it's going to be very interesting to um, to see, like, how, how did he get through this? I mean, we saw that he actually got through it If uh, from the screenshot he posted. I just, we didn't get to see how. So hopefully he doesn't lose connection again. And we're going to have to see how it goes. Yeah, there, a lot of someone said, why is everyone losing? The reason, I don't know. I don't know. These top players get 6-star after 6-star all day in, in leaderboards. But you know what it could be is, for one, there's a lot of new bases in this tournament. Like, a, a whole lot of new bases. And then, two, the nerves. Like, you you don't understand until you're in the moment. Like, you're going to be, you're, you're nervous. You don't know what's going on. Oh, this is this is so smart. Oh, look at that. He, he we're going to have to watch that back. But he triggered a push trap. And it, it didn't push anything. And now he's out of range of the can of the lava launcher. He's gonna take down the air bombs. That was that was so perfect. That was uh, that could, that could be luck. That could be just that could be a sign from above. But he avoided a push trap somehow. So we're gonna have to see how does he how does he get through the next part of this. I mean, with with getting down this uh getting down this air bomb, that's gonna leave only the. Air Expo, Air uh, Mega Tesla, and the Roaster left alive here. And now all he has to do is just get through this. I mean, he finds a Tesla. I mean, you have to say he did He did technically get a practice shot at this base because he lost connection. But, I mean, uh, you know, all the teams agreed that even though he got that, it was still probably fair. They still wanted to give him, like, a shot here. It, we didn't want to, like, just give him a zero star uh, because he lost Wi-Fi. So... And we see that is going to be the case right here. We have the last baby dragon coming in. This is looking like it's going to be absolutely crushed. And he's going to be able to use this last baby dragon ability wherever he wants. He, he has a swag baby dragon completely. Now, again, Halo is a former number one player in the world. He is maybe not super active anymore, but he still has the skills needed to just absolutely crush bases. And we see that happening right here. He's going to send one cannon card forward just to test for traps to make sure he's not going to run into indie bombs. And then now he's going to use his next cannon cart, or maybe he might, I don't think he's going to move it at all, actually, just because he doesn't want to risk losing it. Because look, look at that bomb right there. That would have killed one of his cannon carts. That is why you do them one at a time. And now, flying all the way to the corner, we're going to be able to finish this part off. And we're going to go ahead. We're going to get to the next stage here. Psychopath up against 
a pretty common second stage. You see the second stage all the time. You've probably seen it multiple times today. So how is he going to pull this part off? I mean, uh, I would assume that he's going to be able to do uh, just more cannon carts. I mean, if you put cannon carts just on each cannon, you win. Okay, I thought he was going to use... Wait. Okay. Um, never seen this approach before. Is he going to use barbarians and archers? Why does he have so many? Oh, okay. So since he got that last baby dragon alive and he didn't place it down, he can actually change it out. So now he can uh, just kind of have fun with whatever he wants. I saw someone suggested he could use a double dropship ability on the multi-mortar. That is true. He could. I don't know if he wants to do that just because, um, like, for instance, baby dragons might do that better. But, um, you know, I, I don't know. He has all his cannon cards all set coming in now. He's using the Barbarians. We see not a lot of people tested for traps on the second stage. And we saw that a lot of people hit push traps in the second stage. I mean, I know, I know, I think, um, what's his name? I think Psychopath hit a push trap, maybe. I'm not sure. I know there were a few people today who hit push traps. But we see Hallow, he, he's, not, he's not messing around. He's not going to leave it up to chance. He's going straight in and he's going to just make sure not to find anything. And now this looks like we might find the first six star of the match here. It's going to be quite impressive, uh, uh, to say the least. I mean, to s swag a entire baby dragon with the ability, he didn't even place it down. Pretty, pretty good attack here. I'm guessing what he's going to do is baby dragon on the auto outpost to take out all the zappies. Because his cannon cart cannot take that down. So he starts in the battle machine from the corner. Now he's probably going to come in here in a second and start in his baby dragon here to just take down the auto outpost. That's going to be a really good plan here, I would imagine. Um, because it's going to just take out all the zappies. You don't need to even worry about them. And here it comes, just like that. Boom, everything's gone. Um, but now we're running into some issues, actually. Because look, this battle machine is getting absolutely shredded. So he needs to take down the multi-mortar. That, he probably can still get this. He has one can, uh, barbarian left for the corner right over there. And then the cannon cards are going to be able to take down everything, I believe. So I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to pull this one off still. But it definitely, that battle machine got absolutely shredded. And look, he put a cannon cart into the range of the multi-mortar. That is really bad, but he is not out of this yet. He just needs to take down this cannon and take down the multi-mortar. And then he gets this. I think he has enough time. Wait a second. I just realized he didn't use the barbarian in the corner. I think he might time fill this. Okay, this is bad. This is really bad. Can he keep this cannon cart alive? It's a time fill. It isn't, it isn't even a time fail. He just fails. Oh, how low he threw. He threw the second stage because he didn't use the Barbarian on the corner. That is so unfortunate. That's going to be a 189% five-star there. I mean, again, not the worst attack there, but that is so unfortunate. I mean, very, very close. So now, now it is time for the grand slam of this match. We got Judo Sloth versus carbon fin let's go ahead i'll go make sure they know that they're about to go up i think we ran slightly behind schedule no we're actually on schedule so i'm just gonna let them know that is time it's time their time to shine um let me go let them know who goes first there we go perfect okay so it is time to go i'm i'm very interested here who is gonna win this part of it i mean Carbon Finn, obviously a great strategic mind, but if we look at the matchups over here, we're going to have to notice that Carbon Finn actually has uh, way significantly less trophies than Team Judo. Like Team Judo over here, Judo has 4,800 trophies, but Carbon Finn, on the other hand, he simply has 4,500 trophies. So, I mean, or 700 trophies, sorry. So, there's a 200 trophy gap here between Carbon Finn and Judo Sloth. So, that's going to make this a little more complicated. So, I'm excited to get into this match and see who's going to pull this one off and see who's going to win. Uh, but we do have a little bit of time here while we're waiting for them to come. So, let's just go give them a second and hope they get here somewhat soon. Carbon Finn has just posted his base now, and now it's up to Judo Slot to come in and attack. We got, he has plenty of time still, and here we go. The moment we've all been waiting for this. How good is Judo Sloth? <laughs> He's using the Among Us base too. What? This is crazy. Um, if you guys don't notice this base, I don't, they're, <laughs> they're probably messing with Carbon a little bit. It's actually a good base, surprisingly, but if you, if you notice the shape of it a little bit, you just, you, you pay attention to it. It is uh, a little suspicious, but um, we're going to have to stream. Um, uh, sorry, we're going to have to think. I was reading chat. 
How is he going to do this? He has all baby dragons selected here. And Judah Sloth now has to see if he can take down the Among Us space. I mean, we saw that um, Judah Sloth Rick rolled the entire Clash of Clans community. So now he's getting a little memed on with the with this base here. But can he overcome such diversity? Um, he's going to go for the air bombs. That's a bad idea. I mean, it's not a bad idea, but he's going to probably hit a push trap. We've seen these push traps. I mean, Clash Bashing hit a push trap. Um... Uh, nose boy hit a push trap and now there's a, probably going to be a push trap right over here because this is where they want to go for he switches off the cannon cart smart move that is a really smart move and now he's going to just send him battle copter from the builder hall that's not a bad idea i mean he's going to charge up his ability all the way that's going to work pretty well and now battle copters are going to be able to have the baby dragons come behind him and that's going to be pretty solid so let's go ahead we're going to have the baby dragons come and um Battlecopter just is about to be in range of the Air Expo. He's going to get to the max stability. So this base is a few seasons old, which is actually good because this means that it's probably still a little bit weak to Baby Dragon spam. We see the Baby Dragons coming in all around this corner here. Now, the the deployment, I would say, I'm not going to say it's bad, but it definitely... It definitely is going to be a little difficult to finish this off. He gets down the air bombs though with the baby dragon. Oh, barely one HP. He finds the air bombs and the baby dragons are grouped together on this side. That's actually quite bad, but can he still get this? Look, he's going to be able to take down the uh, mega Tesla now. And okay, it's all down to the battle copter and the one that's baby dragon. It's getting a little close. I don't think he has the force and it's going to unfortunately be a 75% fail against this base i mean it was very very close here though i think what really messed this one up is those baby dragons got grouped together so that definitely made this way more difficult than it needed to be so judo is coming in with a really really good uh first attack here to kind of start it off but still not exactly what they were looking for i mean it was a good try here up against this base i mean obviously the among us base is kind of a uh, a funny base to use but um, the 75% two star, I'm going to be honest for a creator that I think that is, I think that's the highest we've seen a creator get today. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Clash bashing and Alvaro both got into the 80% and high nineties, but, um, so we're going to have to see how does carbon fin to pull this one off carbon fin now is going to be the one attacking and can he show judo sloth his superiority or is it going to be a little bit rough so judo sloth again he is he has a base builder on his team but also you see carbon fin had his own base builder so it's going to be a little difficult and if we're going right now we're going to go look at judo sloth the base that he has right now this base is a predetermined layout so you gotta hope judo sloth is not going to use this base because if he does this base will probably get crushed i mean this base was made um just whenever you upgrade like during builder hall uh 2.0's uh change they just pre-made you bases and this is one of those bases so we see though the architects i think they win no matter what um but they got what a three star four star and then a a two star no was it no three star five star two star so they're 10 stars right now and architects are already at 10 stars so unless carbon fin completely throws and gets a zero star they're 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 gone they're done i mean i guess they would win on percent still though so I mean, we already know the architects are going to be taking this match, but I would love to see a creator actually get a, a into the second stage here. The big question, who is going to be the first creator now to get into the second stage? I mean, I told you guys at the beginning of the stream, we knew the creators would be having a little bit of a hard time because builder base is actually so difficult and the time they had to train was probably not enough to get them at a level where they could probably take this down. But builder base is just so difficult now and nobody really un expects it, but it is, it's not a walk in the park anymore. I think a lot of people may have overestimated like, oh, this is gonna be easy. I'm, I'm gonna just like, I'm gonna just throw this here and we're gonna get a six star. I mean, that's how it was when Bitter Hall 2.0 first came out. But nowadays, man, it is way more difficult than it used to be. So we're gonna have Carbon Fin coming in quite soon. And I believe it is about his time to go up. And then after that, we're going to have our final match of the day. And let's go ahead and let Judo Sloth know it's uh, time to go in. It's time for him to post his base. And Carbon is... I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, <laughs> we have someone advertising their channel in the chat. That's why, why I'm not streaming the tournament uh, uh, clan chat. We have so many clan requests right now. But... um. Let's go ahead. We're going to just wait for this. Judo Sloth has just posted his base, and now it is nearly time to get into the last attack. Carbon Finn is going in live up against Judo Sloth. This is a little bit of a friendly rivalry. And yeah, okay, this base is hard. 
what would you do against this? I'm gonna tell you right now what the best strategy for the space is. A giant over here is gonna tank for everything, and then you should be able to just send in cannon cards. Now, I'll be honest, I did not see this. They moved around the lava launcher. That's a really weird decision. And honestly, no, this approach would not work anymore. And look, Carbon Finn is switching to Pekka's. Okay, honestly, I see the vision here. This is a good switch. This is a good switch here because there is way more air defense than Pekka defense here. I mean, obviously, like you see that everything is grouped into this compartment. If he gets a giant on inside this compartment a bomber from the elixir collector that's going to open up everything everything will be tanked for by that giant that would be a perfect placement now i don't know where he's going to go in I, he might go in from this corner i just think he has to really go in from over here he's bringing in two bombers though to kind of make sure he's not going to run into any issues a really smart play this is kind of what you like to see and he's going to just kind of full send i would hope at the right compartment okay i mean you know um not the worst place to go in. The big question here is how does he get to the Mega Tesla? And look, he's finding a Tesla right here behind the Builder Hall. So the reason this is not great is because he's letting the Battle Machine just die. Um, he needs to put a Giant in front of it as soon as possible. Now, oh no, no, Battle Machine's done. No, Carbon, no. Okay, oh, okay. Um, uh, this, this one may not go super well, I'll be honest. Okay, Bomber, he needs to use the Bomber ability, that's for sure. I mean, he has the Bomber just cooking on this wall here. That's going to let everything just... Um, I mean, he has a giant in their tanking still, so th this one's going to be a little rough. I mean, the reason this was bad is just the Battle Machine The battle machine got clapped. I mean, this is exactly the defense you would want to see as uh, the Team Judo Sloth. It's just, unfortunately, it doesn't quite matter because... Wow, it's going to be a one-star. That's that's actually kind of crazy. It's going to be a one-star. Because, look, this giant cannon should hit the bomber, I think. And, yeah, that's it. A one-star, 47%. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Carbon. I'm sorry. I mean, that was... There's just a little bit... The battle machine just did not go the right direction. Um, so, that does still... They win. All he needed was the one-star. And you know what? You know what he could have been doing? He could have been doing a little bit of strategy there, you know? He could have been going for a attack that he's not confident with that way the other players don't know which strategy he's been trained you know that would be a smart move if they've already won the match they honestly should not show what strategies they've taught carbon finn because if they're showing like each creator learned about like one strategy so if they show people what they taught carbon they're going to trap for carbon finn right now the next match carbon has to play tomorrow they're probably going to trap for pekos and that if this was a strategic decision to make sure that they didn't know what strategy he was using, that would be really smart. But with that out of the way, we now have the victors of the match, and that is going to be Team uh, Judo Slot. Let's go see if we can get the overall statistics there. We got um, a th uh, 11 stars to 10 stars, and we got three attacks each, and they still won on percentage. So, I mean, honestly, they already had won the match, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of suspicious here. Did Carbon Finn plan to do bad? That way people wouldn't know what strategy he was good at. I don't know. But with that, it is time for the very last match of the day here, and this is going to be Team Itsu. This is the powerhouse team, and we know Itsu has a number one finish in the Builder Base. Now, he has not played Builder Base 2.0 in a little bit, but um, he still has a number one finish in Builder Base, also a number one finish in Home Base. That really doesn't matter in this scenario, but really cool to have double number one. He is on a team with Daniel 5, the former number one player a couple months back, and not only the former number one player, but he is also, at this moment, the current number one player in the world at the time of this um, stream. So, I mean, this is a really solid team. And lastly, we got um, Gobos here. Gobos, these are all German players. This whole team is German. So, we got the German Giants here is what they were saying they were called, but uh, didn't get a logo in time. So, we just went with Team Itsu. Gobos is the last player on the team. He as well has a number nine finish here. All of these players have super, super solid um, stats here. So, I'm going to go ahead and see if everyone is ready. Let me go see if Gobos is in the clan. I don't see him here. We're going to go see if he'll show up. He is in the clan. Perfect. Okay. Okay. It's looking like we're going to be ready to start. Now, I know what you're wondering. Who is the next clan we got up against? So, that's a good question. We're here. They are up against Team Balalaika. Balalaika was initially a, uh, a Russian-speaking team, and then their creator left two days before the tournament, which made me have to go find a new creator, and then one of their players was unfortunately banned. So we have a couple, there's no more, 
a lot of Russian here. We do have Max Killer. Max Killer is one of the best Russian players in the world. And then we also got FJB. He is a player all the way from the United States here. Uh, he is a big cannon card player. And lastly, we got Jacob's Clash. Now, I'll be honest, Jacob's Clash may not have as many subscribers as the other uh, YouTubers here, but man, he is still a, I, I messaged him last night. Last night, we had 12 hours left before this tournament was gonna start. And I messaged him, I said, I need someone to fill in for this role. Would you be interested? And he said, absolutely. So last night, him and I were in a voice call with his team for like five hours. We were training him as soon as we can. So I'm, I'm very excited to see how, how well did he learn in the time that we got. I mean, he, he grinded all the way from 4,700 trophies, or no, he was 4,600 trophies last night, and now he is at 5,027 last I checked, and currently he is gonna be at, um, let's go see, yeah, he's still around there. So, I mean, this is looking really solid, and we're gonna go ahead, we do have extra time here, so we're just gonna go ahead and start this match, and we're just gonna hope that everyone's ready to go. So, first up, we're gonna have Daniel up against Max, Let's go Max, let him know to post for Daniel, and we're going to get into the match right now. I mean, I'm really excited to see. I mean, Jacob's Clash, he has a very, he has a much smaller YouTube channel, but even still, you should totally check it out. I mean, he, I think he might be streaming this right now. He hasn't uh, played Builder Race apart from this, so it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Let's go ahead and get into this, and we got the first match here. Wow, I just realized Team Itsu is very hard to read. Maybe I'll have to change that for the next stream. It says Team Itsu for anybody wondering, but... We have uh, Daniel going up against Max Killer. Max Killer, I'll be honest, he hasn't played in a little bit. He hasn't played since a couple months back. So we got to see. He has a... Wait, what? Wait, wait, what is this base? What is this? This is a second stage instead of a first stage on the first stage. Max, what are you doing? <laughs> what is your plan here? I mean... I don't know. I don't know what you what you're expecting is gonna happen here. I mean, what? I I am so beyond confused here. So, he's he's. I mean, maybe they don't want to show the real bases yet. But either this was the wrong base, or Max has just got something devious planned up here. But this is yeah, the stages are completely swapped. This is going to get absolutely obliterated. <laughs> There's no shot this doesn't get like completely destroyed. He's using Barbarians. Even though this base looks pretty much free, he's still going to test for all the traps here because you don't want to just make stupid mistakes. But I'm pretty sure he's going to swag two baby dragons here. I mean, this is a really interesting base here. Now, what this could be, this could be an anti-six-star base, you know? They might be trying to say, you know what? Daniel is the number one player in the world right now. We know we're not going to get him on a fail, so let's make the second stage really hard. Um, I don't think it's going to work well, but it, it definitely is a uh, interesting idea because I'm pretty sure he's going to keep his whole army alive. So um, now the only reason this might be a benefit is because you do have the Zappies now that are going to be an added defense almost. So it's going to be 15 defenses on the second stage instead of 14 because those Zappies are going to trip everything up. But unless he has a really good plan for these Zappies, it's just not a good idea. And look, Daniel's playing this smart. He knows this is just, if he gets these cannon cards into the next stage, he wins. Because he's going to have three cannon cards alive and both the baby dragons that he does not need. And this was this was a really... A really um, interesting strategic decision from Max Killer here because I mean I was gonna say look he's low on time he has two baby dragons he hasn't deployed this was definitely um not what you're really expecting to see from players at this level I mean Max Killer again one of the best Russian players I guess he's just he just doesn't care I mean look Daniel swags two baby dragons here this one is gonna be absolutely free so now on the second stage he's not gonna have six troops He's going to, no, what are you doing? What is this? Not this base. This base is going to get absolutely destroyed. He has seven troops to take down a first stage. I don't see this working, Max. I, this was an interesting plan, but I just don't know how this is going to work. I mean, the base is anti-cannon cart. I'll give him that. Like you, do, you have the ground expo here. You have the lava launcher and the giant cannon, but he doesn't care. Max, I mean, Daniel does not care. He's just going to full send everything. And just let them kind of work on everything. Again, the only way this would be beneficial is that this Zappy auto outpost might help him. But I really don't see this um, pulling out and saving the day here. 
I don't think this is going to be a great idea. I don't see this being a a smart plan. I'll be honest. Um, if this gets anything less than a six star, I will be impressed because, yeah, he's absolutely massacring the base right now. I mean, at this point, he's just doing a cannon card attack. All he has to do is take down this uh, ground expo and take down this lava launcher, and then he's pretty much got it. So he does find some air bombs over here. Now he's he's going to use a baby dragon onto the auto outpost to damage up the giant cannon and the builder hall. That's just the smartest idea. Um, he needs to do that soon. He's about to let his cannon card die. Uh, oh, that was a big mistake. That was a big mistake. Now, it's not over. It is, it is actually quite far from over. This still looks like it's going to be complete overkill. Um, now, these Zappies are kind of being a pain, but he does still have two cannon cards left, and there's still the Mega Tesla, which is a big defense, but look, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. This was just a really weak base here. I mean, I'm quite surprised to see a base this weak being used in a tournament this big. I mean, it was a bold decision, but it just, it just at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I mean, he's going to absolutely six-star a complete triple uh, on both stages. Kind of, kind of a bad decision. Um, okay, well, <laughs> it's a pretty devious plan, but let's go ahead. We're going to get back into our next attack here, which now is going to be Daniel defending against Max Killer. Um, so let's go see how he does here. I mean, we're, we're nearly, we're at the end stages here. I mean, we got the best teams kind of just towards the end. Like, I, I know everyone's excited to see Itsu. You know what I'm also mainly excited for is Jacob's Clash. <laughs> Jacob's Clash is just, he, I, I'm here for the underdog, man. He, he's a, a very small creator, but still, like, at the same time, like, I, he, he's, he came in when I needed him, and he did the work that a lot of the people didn't do. So, I mean, you guys got to go check him out. He's in the description if you care to see that. And let's go just get into this next attack. We got Max Killer here. And this base, we actually saw, we saw Natromia use this base. So, what I would be doing if I were Max Killer right now is I would be looking at this, taking a little bit of notes because we just saw how to take down this base here from Halo. So, this is going to be an interesting, interesting um, approach here. So, I wonder how he's going to be able to take this down this base this hard i'm gonna be honest it's, it's quite hard i have failed against it multiple times in the ladder right now so okay okay max max is he's going with the skill he's going with the skill he's bringing in the drop chips and the minions he knows what's up and i don't see it's going well i don't see it going well i just don't i mean i've used drop chips against this base just to see if it would work and um it's it's not the best to use I, i'm very interested to see Max hasn't played in super long, so I will be honest, he's a little, he's a little rusty, um, but I, I'm really interested to see. Like, it looks like Daniel, like, obviously this base, this base is one of the best uh, in the meta right now. This base is tripping up everybody, and I'm very interested to see how he's going to do this, so why don't we go ahead. He's using the dropship onto the air bombs, dropship onto everything he has. Okay, good tanking. Battlecopter ability now would be smart, and he does do it. And now he needs to tank for this roaster compartment. That's the big issue right now. And this mega Tesla compartment too. Okay, look at this. Look at this battle. Uh, sorry, dropship coming in. That should tank for everything here. Ooh, that that mega Tesla did some massive splash damage though before it went down. He has so many minions though. Actually, I think he's he might be fine. I mean, he has apparently bad Wi-Fi too, but he might get through this. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know, Max. You you picked a dangerous strategy against a dangerous base. I mean. This base has, the reason this base is good is because it is anti-minion dropship. So we've seen that today all the dropship spam strategies just, they aren't working. I mean, a lot of people expect them to just be complete six stars, but they're just not working. So, I mean, what I would recommend to use against this base, we saw Halo take down this base. And you know what, Max, I'm sorry, this is going to be a time fail. I don't see this, this has to be a time fail. Everything is so low. Uh, that, that's a bummer to start out. The, we're going to start out the match with Daniel getting a six star and Max time failing. So definitely not the start you want to see. At least he's going to get the two star, but this is super unfortunate here. Luckily, um, it's, again, these are double elimination matches. It is not over until the second time you lose. So you got time. You got time. You, you don't know who's trying to give himself a good comeback story. Maybe that's the plan. It's just to get a good comeback going. So that's going to be it for that match. It's going to be a 90% two star. And that's definitely not what they were looking to start from. Let's go into the next chance. All right. Yeah, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. That's why you don't use, use drop ships and minions. I mean, let's go ahead. Let's go see who's going to be up next. I believe we're going to have um, FJB going up against um, 
what's it, what's his name again? I forgot. Wait, no, 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 no. We have, we have Gobos going up against FJB. Let's go see how this goes. Um, okay, I guess I guess we're gonna have FJB go first. I mean, it doesn't really matter who goes first as long as it's one at a time. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a bummer. Max, Max are you in chat? Yeah, he's just laughing. Um, let's see. Just letting them know who's first. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. It's done. We're just gonna let let them all work here for a second. They got time. So we're gonna have Gobos going in first. And I see. I think. Okay, okay. Sometime soon, sometime soon. I mean, I'm really into it. This is going to be such an interesting last match to watch, though, because we have Jacob's Clash, a creator which is probably not a lot of you guys have heard of, and he's going to be going up against Idzu. I mean, this, uh, this is the biggest underdog we've had today, but I mean, I think we should still be good. We're getting very close to the end here, and it's going to be very interesting to see how they decide to take this one down. So let's go see. We have Gobos bringing in Pekkas. Okay, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be really interesting. Pekkas are not really in the meta right now, especially not with Bombers. I think this might go bad. I, I don't see I don't see this going well. But, I mean, I'm not, not to psych you out, not to jinx you, man. But, I mean, he does get some very good Pekka uh, uh, Bomber value right here. That's going to open up the Mega Tesla and everything. But it's going to be quite interesting to see where he starts from so he has battle machine coming in from the very corner why is he doing that okay interesting interesting and the tesla pops up but it does not retarget the giant that is so important he is very lucky he got that he only brought one giant though was that on purpose or was that an accident these packets are going to get absolutely shredded in here oh no this is really bad this is really bad. I told you I didn't see this going well. This is why everything is walking around. This base is anti Pekka. Everything is so compartmentalized. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay. Well, this is this is gonna make it kind of a tie. So FJB is gonna need to bring it back. Unless, oh wait a second. I spoke too soon. I might have spoken too soon. I think he might be able to pull this off here. Let's see. We d we saw earlier these high DPS areas are absolutely like these lowered archer towers shred through everything. But look, this Pekka ability. He's gonna get the Pekka ability here. Let's go see. It should take down the lowered archer tower. Perfect. And he is gonna get to the second stage with the bomber and the battle machine remaining. So it's not tied up. It is not tied up at all. What would be clutch here? Jacob's Clash needs to get a good attack and that's not gonna be easy against these meta bases. You see these top players, we've been playing this since it came out and we're struggling. So these creators, that's why they're having such a hard time. It is not easy whatsoever. Okay, okay, let's go see. Let's go see how they're gonna do this. Um, he has just the cannon cards left alive. Ooh, this is a smart base. This is really smart. Look at this. He cannot put the uh, cannon cart anywhere but right here. And there might be push traps there. He can he can put it over here, but there's a guard post unit, and there might be a Tesla. And he can maybe try it up from the top, but that's going to be hard for him to maneuver. And I don't know why people haven't done this earlier. Putting this all the way down in the corner is such a smart idea, because that just defends this cannon from cannon cart really easily. So uh, it's, it's not over yet. All Gobos really needs to do is get a 5-star. That's really all. He should not go for a crazy 6-star. Look at this. The bomber is going to be put down to take down the guard post units. What a smart use of the bomber there. That was actually so, so smart. So now he's going to be able to take down all the zappies too. And this is going to be a time fail. Um, there's really no way around it with the only three troops remaining. But even still, it's an excellent... Look at the bomber. The bomber was just so perfect. I mean, bomber is doing so much there. He took down the zappies, he took down the guard post units, now battle machine. Battle machine will come in from the corner. This is going to be a very high two star. It's just he does not have any possibility of having enough time to finish this one off and get a six star, which is unfortunate, but um, at least uh, at least it's not a fail here. I mean, we've seen worse attacks. Um, not saying anyone's name, but um, now we'll just see him kind of go off of this. So I, I'm trying to figure out how high will this get up to? The battle machine is going to go towards the crusher, I think, which is going to be bad. It's going to absolutely obliterate it. So he is going to get the five star. It's just it might be a pretty low five star. I don't know about this one. Let's go ahead. He's going to be going in. Here comes the mortar. His cannon cart is getting destroyed. I told you there would be a Tesla there. And that's exactly where it was. Okay. He, he can't move anything. And this is going to be a 156% five star. Not a bad attack, but definitely not the attack he was looking for. I mean, we'll have to, we'll have to get over there soon. Oh, Itsu. Itsu is Itsu's here. Okay. So now it is time for FJB to attack Gobos. 
Um, and after that, then we got the match we've been waiting for, Itsu versus Jacob's Clash. I'm excited to see how this goes. Let's go ahead and get ready to go back to here because we have the next match coming in here in a second. There we go, FJB. He needs a six star. This team needs the six star right now, and I don't know if he's going to be able to get it. So let me go make sure I'm not getting the worst internet here. Okay, having like a slight internet, but it should be fine now. It got all the way back to normal. So there we go. Perfect, perfect. Now, we have FJB. FJB likes baby dragons and cannon cards. So he's starting in two cannon cards. That's, oh, look at this. Look at how close he is to the lava launcher. He better pause that immediately. Oh, oh, is he in range? No, is he in range? Um, I don't, yes. Oh, no, he's in range of the lava launcher. Oh, why did he keep going? FJB, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> Okay, um, this is really bad. Okay, oh he he's he's panicking too. FJB, what are you doing? You gotta you gotta just. Okay, I mean you know what? This might not be bad though, cause now he might be able to take out air. Oh no no now he's messing up. He should have just taken the air bombs. FJB just he he messed up a timing and then he panicked and this is gonna be not the attack they're looking for. Thank God this is double elimination, cause we've had a lot of teams. I think the nerves are getting to them a little bit. Um, Wow, yeah, um, quite unfortunate. Now, he does have one more cannon cart, and he, he immediately puts it into range of an archer tower. Um, not exactly what you want to see. I think what he was thinking here was if he could get down the lava launcher, then he could take out the rest of the base with the cannon carts. That would have been a good uh, comeback. It's just he he didn't have enough force to do that. So, I mean, we're going to see this is going to be a lot closer, but it's still going to be it's still going to be a fail. I mean, that Tesla absolutely destroyed things the lava launcher messed up the whole thing i'm gonna hear fjb probably rage in a little bit um but <laughs> it's still a pretty good attack um as far as the recovery goes i think he just he just panicked too much he shouldn't have done that much there he should have just let it die and this is gonna put team balalaika at a <laughs> i think they've lost already so um definitely not what you're wanting to see from fjb let's go ahead now that was an 86 percent two star not great not terrible we're gonna have to see tomorrow if we get some people doing some better attacks because there have been so many two stars today i mean what i want to see though is which content creator will be the first content creator to get to the second stage i feel like itsu might be that so let's go see itsu is it's obviously going to be the um the heavy heavy hitter here i mean he is former number one builder base player in the world <laughs> former uh home village player number one in the world so yeah it's gonna be interesting we have him about to go in in just a second i'm, a, I'm a, we're about to we're about to get to it <laughs> uh he's speaking in chat a little bit okay here we go here we go how's it gonna happen there we go here it is itsu is in and this this isn't a good base. Why did <laughs> Max? Why did you tell him to use this base? Okay, it's it's okay. Um, this this base, you know, it's not great versus a lot of strategies, but Itsu might be able to just clean it up. I mean, it's not a bad base, but it's 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 a bad base. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's not really what he should have used. Um, but you know, a lot of people time fail here. A lot of people are looking at the base. They're like, what am I supposed to even do against this? This base looks so weird. You got the Mega Tesla up at the top. You have no place to use a cannon cart. You have this massive compartment for no reason. It's just so big. I could go on and on about why this base is weird, but it is a really weird base. This base was built by Max, and we saw what Max's base he used for himself was, so hopefully this one works a little bit better. Um, yeah, this is this is not the type of base I was expecting. This, this might let Itsu get through the first stage, to be honest. Itsu might make creator cup history and be the first constant creator to ever make it th further than a two star i mean that would be pretty cool it's just yeah look the the battle copter it gets so much value there's probably gonna be teslas here but it doesn't much matter uh, they probably shouldn't have used this base um okay yeah battle copter is just chilling out now here comes the baby dragon now where are the teslas here um Okay, we haven't found one yet. Okay, good. Yeah, there's no. <laughs> okay, there's one Tesla, but that's a really bad spot because look, the splash is gonna hit the air bombs and take that out. Okay, this this is very questionable base building. I'm gonna be real with you. 
Um, I, I don't know what, what this is. And this, I think Itsu has got a guaranteed clear here. I mean, we have two Teslas on the back end, but I don't really think it matters unless, no, he gets down the Mega Tesla. So this is a really, really interesting decision here from Team Balalaika to be running such a unique and, wow, Itsu's going to crush this, dude. <laughs> Uh, we knew Itsu was going to be the heavy-hitting team here, but he has two Baby Dragons with the ability left. Max, we got to seriously talk about your bases, man. It should be um, all right. I mean, Itsu just got to take down the second stage, but this is going to be the best-performing team of the day here, and they're going to be getting a possible 17 stars. Yeah, Max, you're not allowed to cook anymore, man. Like, you can't. <laughs> what is the second stage? Okay, you're not allowed to make bases for the team. Uh, I, uh, I'm so confused. Let me see what he's saying. I mean, Itsu obviously this isn't just like it's a it's a good base, but even still, like Itsu is a pretty solid builder here. I mean, I mean, sorry, attacker here, and he's doing quite well. It looks like he was practicing Pekka's too. That or he, that was his fake army here, but he has two baby dragon abilities and another two baby dragon abilities. If if this isn't a six star, I don't know what is. I don't see this messing up. Yeah, second stage is a little iffy, too. So, I mean, we this is some crazy performance. Itsu is going to be looking like the team to beat in this tournament. I mean, we saw Goated. Goated did pretty good, but with the fact that Itsu is also going to be doing just as good as his uh, pro player teammates, this just shows this, this team is going to be a menace to society. So, I'm not sure how this is going to quite work. We're just going gonna to hope that... Um, Hope that it doesn't go too bad, I guess. I mean, Itsu is just going to be working on the air bombs. He brings in a drop ship. That's a really interesting and unique decision because, look, that's going to that's gonna uh, splash onto um, one of the firecrackers, not onto both of them, unfortunately. Um, so now we just got to see how does he finish this last part off. We have the baby dragons working throughout the rest of the base here. And now it's looking pretty, pretty, pretty solid. I mean... I feel like Itsu is going to get the 6-star here, which would be absolutely crazy. I mean, we, we saw a lot of creators struggling to get through the first stage here. So now, all of a sudden, to see a content creator to get a 6-star for the very first time, creating builder base to creator tournament history is absolutely crazy. So we're just going to let him finish off the base here. I mean, clearly, he has enough time. He has enough force. And Team Itsu looks like they're going to have a total of 17 stars to win this match. That is the most star. I think the most other stars we saw was from, um, what team was it? I think uh, the Architects, uh, they got 13 stars. Now we have 17. This was a near perfect war. That is crazy. That, that is um, like absolutely crazy. Sorry, that was Team Auto who got the 13 stars. I was trying to get reminded of that. And now he should be able to get to the corner. And this is a six star. Congratulations, Itsu, getting the very first six star of the tournament. Hopefully, there's more of those. But yeah, I mean, the the base is definitely definitely a little weird of a base. But congrats, Itsu. Let's go and get into the last attack here. We got Jacob's Clash attacking Itsu. Yeah. All right. This this is this is gonna be interesting. I don't know. Jacob did a lot of practice, but again, builder base is hard, and I don't think they're gonna give him as bad of a base as. As as they gave Itsu, I mean, that Itsu was, congratulations Itsu, I mean, you did better than your pro player, I mean, no offense Gobos, you got a little unlucky, but now it is time for the final attack of day one, we have Itsu defending up against Jacob's Clash, so this will be very cool to see, here it goes, I know, I know he's kind of probably a little nervous, I mean, this isn't going to be easy. Oh, dude, this base is so free. I, I tried to teach him how to use uh, this strategy against this base. We saw this base for the third time today. This is the third time we've seen this base. And, you know, he needs to make sure he uses his power potion. And I know he's in a call with his creators, I'm pretty sure. At least I hope he is. And this hopefully doesn't go too poorly. Let me go see. Oh, I don't know if he's in a call with his creators. He really should be. No, he's, he's not, it looks like. Okay. Go look. He just has to go crazy here. Okay. He needs to make sure he uses his... Ooh, he didn't use a power potion. I mean, again, not the end of the world, but he's doing the same approach that we saw Peter use. I guess he doesn't need the power potion if he's just using the cannon curse to funnel, and that's exactly what he's doing. Look at this. Okay. You know, this, this is the first time we've seen a creator... 
no, 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 don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, he barely outranged the Lord Archer Tower. And I was like, what happened there? Like, how is that possible? Then he accidentally moved it forward. But now, look, he's going to get down the air bombs. He's going to get down the Lord Archer Tower. He's going to lose the <laughs> Battlecopter to the Tesla. I mean, look, this isn't, this isn't looking bad. Okay, now it's looking bad. Oh, there's another Tesla. Okay, it's okay. Look, um, it, it's going to be iffy. I'll be honest. He had a good plan. It's just that Tesla there absolutely destroyed it. Now, he does still have a lot left alive here, to be honest. Uh, he's going to let that baby dragon die, and he's going to immediately use another one. Another ability. He did do the ability a little bit late there, and unfortunately, it's not going to necessarily be a six-star, but again, we got double elimination, so... Um, it was a very noble attempt. He did some really cool stuff with cannon carts. I, I would say he's doing quite well um with him and i mean considering he just started learning builder base last night i'll give it to him two-star gang that's a two-star team battle like but look they're just it's a it's a trick they're setting themselves up for a crazy comeback you guys, you guys just don't understand they're gonna do something you've never seen before they're gonna six stars all the way just trust the process um but it looks like he's gonna be able to get all the way up to a hopefully high six star no, not high six star sorry definitely not high two star but i mean it was a good attack from jacob's clash and i mean again he started learning builder base last night like less than 24 hours ago so he's still going to be doing a lot of practice here and he just needs to learn some of the ranges but i'm hoping that he can make a good comeback with team balalaika and that's going to be it for this match it's going to be a 65 percent two star to end off the final match of day one so this was a very interesting interesting stream here. I mean, we're going to have to go look at the overall scoreboards of all the teams. So let's go look at the winning teams real quick. This, I mean, this was the final match of the day. So we're just going to go kind of talk about the winning teams, and then we're going to get out of here. But our first winning team of the day was uh, Goaded. Goaded won, and they have Owe Fury, Alvero845, and Noseboy, and they beat Midnight Bash. Uh, pretty good. I mean, Midnight Bash, I think, had a one star, a two star, and then a six star. And then our next winner is going to be Children of Auto. They had 13 stars total. They got two, uh, no, sorry, they got one six star from Galaxy, a five star from Scion, and a two star from Beaker's Lab. Then we got the Architects, who absolutely just cleaned house. They got 11 stars here, but they got, I think, a six star and a five star, a six star from Psychopath, and a five star from Halo. And then lastly, we got Team Itsu, which got a total of 17 stars. Absolutely insane performance. They got a six, two from, a six star from Daniel, a six star from Itsu, and a five star from Gobos. I mean, this was a crazy uh, matchup here. And in the loser's bracket, we're surprisingly having Midnight Bash as number one in the loser's bracket, even though they have the three-time number one world champion and a top six player. They're in the losers leaderboards, and they'll be going up against Hypnotized Minds likely tomorrow. Hypnotized Minds, they had all two stars as well. Lucky Cajun, Peter, and Sir Moose. Um, I think they all got unfortunate two stars. And then we had Team Judo. They got a, uh, three stars. They got also uh, from Tramia, two star from, I think, no, Henry got a five star. And then Judo got a two star. And then lastly, in the loser's leaderboards is going to be Team Balalaika, which has FJB, who got a two-star, Max Killer, who got a two-star, and Jacob's Clash, who got a two-star. So it's not over yet. Uh, we do have day two coming tomorrow to see how this is going to continue. But, I mean, overall, day one, very interesting day one. I'm really glad with all the attacks that happened. And that'll be it for the first day so thank you guys for tuning in and i hope to see you tomorrow to where we're going to continue up with the losers bracket and the winners bracket we're going to see four more matches tomorrow to help determine who's going to be going to the finals and who's going to be eliminated so tomorrow is the big elimination match but that will not be yet we'll have to see that soon so thank you all for coming here and i hope to see you soon i hope you enjoyed the attacks and if you want to watch them back i'll have videos on them coming out soon but with that out of the way i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll be leaving shortly